that there are some openings these guys play a lot against each other. This one we haven't seen much. Not mm -hmm. like the Rosolimo, I think it's the only game between them. Yeah. The last couple of years. Yeah. We have a lot of Berlin, a lot of Petrovs, but this is the only Rosolimo we have in this video series. In general, such positions with lots and lots of possibilities for both sides is somewhat beneficial to Magnus because he is going to play much faster than Fabiano in such positions. And then if if uh, tension uh, uh, still there uh, by move 35 or something, then this time trouble can prove to be a, a trouble for Fabiano. So what's yeah. uh, what's your biggest takeaway, Sasha? No, I mean I think it was very exciting four hours and extremely boring three hours. <laughs> I mean it was just. Magnus, you seem very surprised by the tenth move. What what were you thinking then? Aruanos. Uh, well, our shit mainly. <laughs> <laughs> Black has a, a very bad version of uh, anti-Berlin. The question is how big is White's advantage? Magnus, were you reasonably satisfied with, with the outcome of the opening?
the line that I invented into top level practice play oh. in my game against Pavel Ilyanov, this bishop c5. I always had an, an, an impression that after c4, e5, black just should not be any worse. Because, <laughs> I mean, obviously, white is tempo up, but uh, e5 is obviously a better move than c4. So I was just, at some point, I just tried, uh, you know, to find a way for black not to equalize, but just to play on even terms with white. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, and I just was putting different positions uh, on computer, and uh, here just uh, after Bishop G2, he actually uh, showed Bishop C5 as the best move. Rook H5, Rook F3, King G2. I can give a lots of checks, no? And then play right Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's what you, of course, that's much better. That's... Draw. Draw a great Draw. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's a great game. <laughs> <laughs> Not an earth-shattering effort by, by the world champion today. Welcome back. Uh, this is Game 5 of the World Championship match here from the Chess24 Studios. I'm Peter Swidler and with me is the wonderful Sopiko Gormishvili. So what do you think will happen today? Thank you very much for the uh, hello and uh, hello everybody. Um, I'm very eager to see what will happen today because I really expect that Fabiano won't deviate from uh, the E4. We have Fabi playing uh, with white pieces like in Game 1 and 3 and uh, in Game 1 Magnus managed to surprise Fabi, but then with this castle uh, and queen c7, uh, Magnus still surprised, but he did not uh, get um, any kind of uh, good position. I mean, Fabi could uh, yeah, and get Yeah, we, we just an saw, advantage. saw in the video a uh, typical uh, Magnus style of uh, answering the questions in a press conference. Were you satisfied with the opening results? Yeah. Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. And nope, I think, is a very fair answer to how Game 3 went for him in the opening. Right. He still pressed a little bit towards the end of it, and I hope you can still see us. It's slightly alarming, but I hope the yeah, everything he... is okay. But uh, I, I agree with your assessment. I, I think uh, 1e4 is, would be strange to deviate when he clearly won the, the opening battle in right. Game 3. And Magnus also said that uh, Fabi outplays him in the opening and he feels that he should start winning games soon. Yeah, that's that's also an interesting subplot, obviously, with, uh, with obvious uh, um, parallels with how the 2016 match went, uh, when uh, the inability to win the game, I think, at some point became uh, a bit of an obsession with Magnus and started driving him to, into taking more and more and bigger and bigger risks. Yeah. Uh, it and, really affects him. Yeah, I think I think it it, it annoys him uh, uh, more than you would think from the outside. So very interesting uh, little bit of uh, story there coming up because we are after this game and the next game we will be at the halfway point, and Magnus will also in game six and seven as we continue returning to this he will have two whites in a row. Two whites. But he did not uh, show us anything uh, great with white pieces so N far. None, none so far at all, yeah. Uh, game 2 was a complete no-show. Uh, he got surprised uh, in the opening and uh, uh, basically played the entire game from that moment onwards, more or less to equalize, which he managed to because white obviously has a, you know, a decent amount of leeway. But uh, he, he wasn't really pressuring very much. And in the in-game... Uh, for uh, it looked slightly more promising, but uh, even had he played the, the move before b5, which I still believe he should have on move 15 in that game, uh, I think it's unlikely he would have won. But it's a strange decision not to not to play and not to press in a very Magnus type position. Yeah, I read the tweet of uh, Kasparov. He tweeted that if you say a with 14 a4, you should continue with b. 15 b5 and he yeah. was asking uh viewers is he too old-fashioned to think like that <laughs> no i think i think that is uh i mean kasparov's 
understanding of chess is uh, not very diminished, as I can, you know, attest to having having looked at some chess with him in, in St. Louis. He's still Gary. Yeah, and uh, he hasn't had very much practice, and uh, actual playing over the board maybe doesn't come as easy as easy to him as it used to. But uh, in terms of you know understanding structures and understandings, you know, critical understanding of critical points in the game, he's still the the great uh, the great Gary and uh, I think the, the question why why wouldn't you play b5 there is very legitimate yeah Magnus hesitated and if we get back to game five I'm really interested as I expect Fabiana to play e4 will uh, Magnus play something like Marshall or open Spanish or he will still go for Sicilians yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting question. Clearly, uh, I don't think the plan that Fabiano showed in Game Three necessarily uh, forces anyone to uh, abandon uh, the Sicilian. I don't think this is how you refute the Rosalimo. White clearly got a very pleasant position, but I'm right. pretty sure you can fine tune uh, Black's response to not be very worried about this if it if it gets repeated. But yeah, uh, the character of playing game uh, in game three wasn't obviously wasn't to to Magnus's liking, and it would have been very strange if it was to Magnus's liking the way the way the opening panned out in that game. And he, he does have a very well established repertoire in e4, e5 openings, which you can always uh, go back to. And uh, you know, a brief plug. Uh, yeah, I, I, I will have to do it left-handed, <laughs> but yeah, these I are. You. I got the right mug. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these are uh, uh, the mugs we've been uh, we've been talking about. We are sort of uh, uh, test driving them for you right now. This is Magnus's signature. Yeah, there it goes. Yep. Good mugs. <laughs> Very usable. You can uh, win those ones in every round, and uh, you can still see the promotion on the screen. There, there's right. a, there's a daily raffle, and uh, the winner of the the mug from game four is, and we will butcher your name horribly, so we apologize <laughs> for that in advance. User uh, Dennis Chu or Dennis Chu or however Dennis it is. Chu, ha, ha, yeah, that is. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm going with that. That is by far the by far the coolest way by far the coolest way of pronouncing this uh, <laughs> sequence of uh, letters congratulations yeah congrats to Denis Shu <laughs> for winning the the Magnus sign mug and we are still eagerly awaiting moves but I expect 1e4 and frankly I still expect the discussion to continue in the Sicilian we have and, the first move e4 and, yeah the moves are coming in so uh, there goes E4 on the board and C5 uh, also played uh, by Magnus. So wow! Well, so no deviation. So far, no deviation, and uh, the first to deviate should be Magnus. Yeah. Because uh, as, as as mentioned, Fabi got more or less exactly what he would want to get in a Rosalima uh, in game uh, three. So he has no reason to do anything else. But people were uh, saying that they want to see neither of no D6. Still, we have Rosalima, but yeah. Bishop B5 is there anyway, so I don't think we would get neither. I'm not sure. Fabi has been playing open Nidorfs recently, and in general, I think against the Nidorf, he doesn't give the check as much as Magnus himself, for instance, because for Magnus, Bishop B5 is by far his main yeah. reply to the Nidorf, even though he kind of tricked me by just going Bishop G5 against the Nidorf, <laughs> against me and Bill, and I was more or less on my own by move six. That was just a betrayal, but... Uh, <laughs> Whoa, okay. Cur it, it is Fabi who deviates because yeah, this he, is he very didn't attack curious. on c6. This is very curious. and uh, He wow. probably means to play knight c3 here, I assume. Once again, trying to remember my uh, distant knowledge of these things. Um, I mean, bishop, d bishop takes c6, d6, and d3. We still transpose Into game uh, three. to game 3. So there, the option still exists and uh, Fabi can still do that if he wants to. But yeah, uh, knight c3 or rook e1 are the separate bits of theory here. And after rook e1, uh, well, the mainline theory, I believe, goes knight f6, yeah. right? Is it taken e5? I think you, you start with e5, knight g5, you go knight c3, and if black goes knight c7, you take here. This is the, uh, the weird theory, because c5 is hanging here, black generally plays b6, and for instance, there's this weird position after knight f6 check, king f8, and the knight goes back to e4. This is a nice little bit of geometry, knight f6 wow. check, because yeah, he take if it. black takes, 
this is a discovered check and black is immediately almost completely busted but there is also rookie one e5 which is what magnus played which i thought wasn't supposed to be all that great because of c3 followed by immediate d4 but whoa okay b4 okay um, are we out of book I've seen. We. <laughs> well, I am. Me. But they, I'm definitely. They. I think I've seen this recently. I'm trying to. Uh, I think maybe we played this with white. I've seen. I've seen this idea in a in a game between strong players recently. But because I never really had any occasion to study it properly, I don't recall the names off the top of my head. Probably Chad can uh, inform us. But this is a very interesting, brave sacrifice because black can take now with the pawn yeah, yeah, and with the knight as well. Yeah, you can take with the pawn and I think the, the idea as usual with these b4 breaks right. is that you continue by playing a3 either immediately or you can also include bishop b2 which uh, threatens the pawn on e5 but I think knight g7 is a very sufficient reply to it which is why I think a3 is probably resembles to Volga type of <laughs> b5, yeah. a6, or b4, a3. Yeah, people are saying Bakro played this against Grishchuk in Paris. So, so we yeah. will again need yeah. our experts. Yeah, more reasons uh, more reasons for bringing, uh, for bringing Sasha into the studio. Yeah, no, I'm, it's, it really was a stroke of genius to, to get Sasha to do this with us because... Uh, yeah. Uh, and also to give him an hour to prepare and to prepare an opinion because he always comes in with uh, I mean not with that he's stuff. yeah not that he is not good enough to actually think on his feet but he also gets an hour to check some things with the machine and educate us when yeah. he joins the show so uh, I'm really interesting if he was surprised because he was playing with black pieces and Buckrow played b4 uh, if he was surprised by b4 it's a it's a rare move for sure as mentioned uh like the old theory when something like c3 knight g7 d4 and if black takes with pawns there is bishop f4 here and castle's bishop d6 was always supposed to be extremely dangerous for black um and i'm wondering uh as i was saying all these things i was wondering if maybe i mean i mean obviously this is all still theory but maybe you can uh you can take like this but I'm, I'm not even sure this changes very much because the bishop on d6 is still extremely annoying. Depends on whether black has this tactic of queen b6 attacking both bishops and after bishop b7 playing rook e8 and now once again both bishops are hanging. And I have right. a feeling I should not I don't remember. Uh, and I don't think I've actually analyzed this properly ever in my life. Um, maybe after queen b6 for instance, maybe e5 makes sense. Queen takes b5 and we, I don't know, start with knight a3 and only take on e7 much, much later. But I have a feeling that we should also cover what happens after b4, knight b4, because yeah, uh, that's course. kind of a pawn, right? It is. We it don't is, uh, it is a full pawn. ruin our structure, we don't give any a3, um, and what happens after that? Bishop b2, just fast development? It's to either bishop b2, but, I, th pawn? but I think maybe the, even the more direct way of playing here would be c3, knight c6, and d4. Because I think having given one pawn, one white cannot really afford to stop, so to speak. And you, you have to play extremely aggressively here. And um, compared to the lines I was just showing, this is actually a full tempo for white. And yes, he's sacrificing two pawns instead of one. But I think the payout is so huge, if it works, that you don't really care about the pawns. Uh, uh, so, so very much. Yeah, white has already castled and black's king is still in the center. So that yeah. remains a big problem for black. And that's why pawn sacrifice might be very dangerous. Yeah, and bishop b2 would be very attractive as well. But I'm wondering what we're supposed to do after a6. Um, because uh, I want to just return to c6 with the knight. And... Uh, right, if I... I'm having all kinds of really sort of uh, like I'm, I'm hallucinating this move a what happens on a b knight c6 or? <laughs> yeah i was wondering if you guy can play like this but probably not probably bishop takes b2 is just very strong just because the point giving up the yeah queen. the point is if black re recaptures the knight then i take on g7 and i will take on h8 next move this could very easily be quite good for white but bishop takes b2 knight d8 and for instance just bishop takes a1 here 
It feels like black will end up having too many pieces for the queen. What about counterattack on a6 if we play a3 and the idea is to mm. trade everything? But That uh, is very nice actually. If we have pawn on b4 then e5 is hanging as well. That is that is very clever. Yeah, because if knight c6 we can take we can and take, take on e5 with something. And that takes before has already been played. And actually, chat I think was oh, wow. uh, horribly overreacting to the idea that Magnus is out of book here. I think it's extremely unlikely yeah. that Magnus and his team would have missed the <laughs> game, uh, the game uh, Bakrog Rishuk. And well, Bishop B2 blitzed out, so I think you're correct. Carlson played this line in 2005 with Black, I read in chat. Mm. Okay, so he's definitely not out of book. Yeah, and. Uh, Bishop b2 plates. Okay, let's consider the options then. a6 we mentioned. We will return to it because it's the most obvious move in the position, and I think a3 is a very good reply to it, so we kind of know what we have to discuss there. There's also uh, two queen moves to protect the e5 pawn, queen c7 and queen e7. I don't really like queen b6 because I think forcing white to make a move like knight a3 is counterproductive. Right. Uh, <coughs> although even that has to be considered, to be honest. Queen b6... I thought knight a3 knight with, the, with the idea of knight c4 is quite strong, but maybe I can play a6 here. If because still if you knight play, c4? Yeah, I have queen c7. Mm. And then uh, I've, and just to, just to explain, I mean, the obvious things, queen takes b5, knight d6 check is not great for black yes. because, uh, sorry, the fork is, uh, wins white a lot of material. But after queen c7, I've covered the d6 square, and the bishop is kind of trapped because if it goes back to a4, it, uh, the light pieces get forked by b7, b5, so... And a3 would not work in the same way because the knight on c4 would be hanging after a, b, a, b. So... Where? I mean... Uh, on the if, previous um, move. Uh, if instead of bishop a4. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah here, here you cannot play a3 because, as, as Sopico mentioned, in the same position, uh, black has the obvious b takes c4 with an extra piece. So queen b6 might be a move, but it looks like in general in positions like this, I, I don't think you want to continue uh, moving with the uh, moving your larger pieces. Bishop a4 might be a very decent reply to it, for instance, because uh, you don't want to be chasing it any further and the e5 pawn is still hanging and after knight c6. Yeah, that was sort of my point. Knight c6 attacking the bishop on b2 maybe wins black an important tempo. And we cannot trap the queen anyhow. We can, play, we can play knight c3, but then I don't know what the threat is, like knight g7, for queen instance. Queen b2 queen b2, queen b2 we, b1. we do win it on the, on the, b, yes. on the a3 square. Yes. But the, the issue with playing knight c3 is that we have closed down our own bishop on b2. And bishop takes c6 followed by knight takes c5 is no longer a threat, which gives black a tempo for something like knight g7. To develop. And yeah, castle. and black is, black is one tempo away from complete safety. If he manages to finish his development by castling, he will no longer have to worry about anything. So, But still we will have a b file open if we play sure. rook b1, bishop a with bishop a3 ah, idea. That's, that's a, whoa, that's a, an important resource. I completely ignored the bishop a3 idea. I thought I can just castle him. But yeah, castles... At least bishop a3. There's also knight d5, but bishop a3 I think is just stronger. And we win this pawn because of the queen a5. Rook if b5. nothing else, if nothing else, white has rook b5. And then I think white gets a very pleasant position. I mean, it's a playable position for black, like takes and d6. But I think you prefer white here. Definitely. Mm. So yeah, very sharp. I'm very happy to see this on the board because, uh, yeah, we get very interesting games. All games uh, were very nice, but this is the most aggressive from. Paul. Yeah, this is this is by far by far the most direct approach to the opening. And people are, people sharp. in chat are saying that uh, Queen C7 is the most popular move uh, in this position, and uh, seventy one percent. I'm guessing for black, otherwise. Why would that be uh, such a great move? <laughs> uh, yeah, queen c7, we were going to come to that, that uh, queen c7 or queen e7, but I think queen c7 is by far the more natural of the two because you want to preserve the e7 square to develop uh, the g8 knight there. And white needs to be very, very fast here because uh, 
Black didn't even have to spoil a structure, uh, the, his structure to play con before. He is a healthy pawn up, and uh, the only compensation White has is open tempo. B file. Tempo. Yeah. <laughs> no, open B file is not really that great, but uh, better development than tempo. Uh, Maybe he can try the uh, moves and ideas you mentioned before with c3 and d4 to open up everything. Yeah, either that or some kind of knight c3, knight d5 idea, um, but that feels a bit slow. I was wondering, because in order to get it to work, you probably will have to include a3 also at some point, and that's just extremely slow. Like knight c3, knight g7 and maybe even the immediate 95 could be deserving of attention and the good thing is that if we take it we cannot play with black d6 because yeah, bishop mm -hmm. on b5 is that's exactly great. what i was driving at yeah i'm trying to do it as forcefully and as fast as possible so that black does not have d76 as a reply to protect the e5 pawn but we should probably i mean if we want we can return to it later because magnus played a6 and we have a, a6. we have a concrete position to discuss and uh, you were a expecting three? a three, yeah. And I think it's um, it's the most important move in the position at the very least. We don't know if it's the strongest, but it's I think it's the one that is the most critical. Change of pawn structure after a takes b five. A yeah, takes let's B4. have a look at this properly. Uh, rook a one, bishop a one. This is. Uh, it's always critical yeah. when pawn structure and, uh, changes. E5 is E5 is hanging, and if Black plays D6 after B takes C5, once again has an unfortunate choice of either allowing C D6, and then he will have this kind of horrible structure on the queen side, or taking here and allowing Bishop takes C5. And I think more White is better. And A3 in the meantime has been played by Fabiano. So uh, interesting. Interesting, and also full credit to you because yeah, I did not spot A3. And, Thank you. Uh, uh, but also, I think it's important to say, before we get overexcited, that um, they both have, uh, uh, well, we, we currently, for some reason, don't see the uh, Magnus' clock times on the screen, but uh, Fabi is playing on, on added time, and Magnus is also playing extremely, extremely quickly. So I think the likelihood, uh, the likelihood of uh, that still being in both of their books is quite high. And one thing I wanted to ask you about is maybe I can do this. Ooh. Um, so if I take it I think you and take, take C5 pawn? Yeah, and this is the question, which one do you take? Because if you take on C5, I was planning to D6. give you the B5 pawn, but play bishop D7. You cannot take on B7 because you lose the bishop on B2. So the queen has to go to some uh, reasonably, uh, uh, you know, non-spectacular squares like B3 or... Yeah, I didn't B4 want to maybe. go to b3 because bishop e6 sometimes yeah. might be b4 with a tempo. maybe to attack this pawn. Actually, queen b4 kind of makes me reassess all this because it forces black to waste the tempo on protecting the d6 pawn by playing something like bishop c6. But and then rook a4 might be good. Yeah, but the. Uh, yeah, after d4. After d4, there's pressure on the e5 pawn. If you play rook a4, I have a reasonably comfortable square on d2. Pawn is still hanging. Knight c3 will come in with tempo next move if you kind of if you protect yeah. it somehow. Yeah, after d4. I think this Rook might still be quite pleasant not. for might still be quite pleasant for white. Good. There is queen a5, but it feels it feels dodgy. It feels like you could you, you could play yourself into some serious but trouble playing like this. I couldn't try queen a5 right away because b7 pawn was hanging and I don't have rook b8, right? Yeah. No, I think and yeah. D6 is also. D6 is you know, I think yeah. you need to Queen. take care of the D6 pawn or D6 pawn first. And bishop C6 does look like the most natural move. Maybe in rook A6 with rook B6 idea. But I think the same things apply. The, the, the queen will return to D2 and then you will end up with this kind of weird looking rook on D6. Right. And you know, knight C3, knight D5 to follow up potentially. <clears throat> this is one way white can uh, um, react on knight c2 and another one is to take on e5 right but this is good yeah, yeah. enough bro yeah this is this is what i wanted to ask you whether uh whether maybe this is stronger but we do create a very strong threat of knight c6 followed by bishop takes g7 but i think maybe queen c7 is a good reply 
hang on a second, but we can, if. yeah, there's queen takes b2 in the end, so we can take yeah. almost anything yeah. here. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Knight d7, tactics. Yeah, because bishop b2, queen b2, now the rook is hanging. So, okay, queen c7 is not a move. What is a move then? <laughs> Same goes for queen e7. Pretty much similar things go for queen e7. Even knight takes d7 again, or there is knight c6, which will force queen f8. Queen of it doesn't lose though, so I'm not sure how good that is. Yeah, and the most natural d6, knight c6, and we're happy to get this dark no. squared bishop. Um, I mean, there is bishop takes b2 here, but I think we just... Oh, queen, queen f6? Wait. Queen b2, um, queen f6, e5. Yeah, this is some kind of a mess. Yeah, but probably white wins. I have a feeling this, this ends up with white either winning or having a very large advantage. Couldn't we take the queen also? That was an option. Yeah, you could also, of course, take on d8, but then... Uh, and we already c3. have c3. Ah, clever. Let's, uh, what's clever. going but, I mean, on? <laughs> yeah. yeah, variation continues. Who knows yeah. what this is? <laughs> we will we will return to this if it becomes relevant, because I have a feeling this is probably just us wow. having but fun. I, I, I might have e5, f takes e5, queen f3, and I want queen f7, and if you take on this is a very good queen spot. f8, queen g7. This is a very good spot. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, this is quite strong. No, but as I said, I mean, we are we are just basically having yeah. fun here. They, <laughs> they've finally given us a really fun tactical position by move 10. So Ooh, we are we are going nice. to town here. But uh, I don't think any of this is particularly likely. And what is uh, also, uh, let me get onto my favorite hobby horse. Why do you play a6 more or less instantly and then start thinking after a3? <laughs> yeah, that's a good I question. I do not understand. <laughs> That's very good. I question. do not understand this sequence of this sequence of events. Maybe trying to remember what was going on on a3. That's one of my logical explanation. <laughs> but then why to decide on a6 so fast, right? Yeah, you you either you know you 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 do either one thing or the other, but not them in this sequence. <laughs> I think it's just maybe. Yeah, he, maybe. he But now it it does feel logical to take and. He will have to take on a1, so we will have this position on the board. So what are we missing here? I guess he can C5 play... C5 hanging, e5 hanging. I guess he can play queen e7 or queen c7, but it looks dangerous. I just don't like this for black at all. Uh, also question is... Yeah, as we said, d6 is just b takes and e5 is hanging, so... If he tries to change the structure with uh, c4, that's, uh, that's... But he's just going to be, be worse. worse he's yeah. just going to be quite significantly worse here after bishop takes c5. The knight comes out to c3, the b5 pawn is weak and will be hanging very soon. d5 square is also very yeah. weak. No, I think this is... Um, objectively, with white, I would think I'm close to winning here. Not just right. better, close to winning, because knight c3 is so strong. No, it, it cannot be c4. It also, for similar reasons, is very unlikely to be c before because, yes, you are uh, going to be. Are Though knight, die, knight doesn't go to c3 and a3, so we will need d. Yeah, but on the other hand, black has this wonderful structure on the yeah. side, <laughs> which, you know, you you expect white to be able to pick it up, you know, one after the other somehow, yeah. because there, there's just no pieces on the board for black like in this position. Black goes, I don't know, knight f6, and we can start, you know, we can start just going after them. And e I don't know, queen, queen c1 yeah. followed by queen b2. Dark square is very weak. And then, and then they will start collapsing. And once we pick up this pawn, the knight will very nicely come out at c3 and then pick up the second one. No, this, this looks horrible. Magnus really has to show something right now because all the lines we've mentioned, it's, uh, it is just simply worse for black. So probably he has something up to his sleeves. I'm really sure in that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very confused by what's going on right now. He also hasn't taken on a1 yet. I mean, is he actually planning to go rook a4 or something? No, he, he has taken on a1 yeah. now. So okay, let's have a look at queen c7. This is the last thing we haven't discussed properly. Knight c3 is yeah, an but, option. Yeah, but yeah, how do you Valley how do you meet how do you meet knight c3? Knight d5, knight b5 hanging. Maybe you can take because if knight b5 it gets kind of trapped on b5 and it becomes at least optically it becomes playable for black. Even this position is quite dangerous because I can play queen e2 and if you play knight e7 for instance there is this tactic. Knight e5, bishop e5, and just simply d4. 
which also seems quite crushing for yeah. four. Probably you have to play d6, but then once again I can play d4, e d4, and maybe take with the knight, create a threat of knight b3, so you constantly have to worry about all this tactical imbalances. Because there is no castle in black's position and king in the center, it's very dangerous. Yeah. G7 bishop is also not yeah. defended. And also I can take on c5, and in this position, once again there is this, actually. You play d6. D6. And what happens if we take, take, and take everything? No, no, I don't think he takes. I think he probably wants to play something like knight e7, bring it over to c c6. Still, if we go knight c3 first? I guess maybe the point is to play before. And then we will get different structure if we go knight, yeah, if we take a knight b5. Once again, it kind of depends on how the complications here come out. But I have queen b six. Queen b six followed by bishop d seven. This probably looks playable, yeah. Because white is just not enough with his tactics. Like queen e two, if yeah, if white has one more move safely, he will play either d four and knight takes e five, and he be, he will be much better. But here the knight is actually caught, and it feels like black just wins a piece. So yeah. b c five knight e seven. If we there's queen e2, actually, which looks well. Yeah. How do you how do you even reply to this? B5 is hanging. How do you and reply to this? Uh, bishop d7 is not valid because d6 is hanging. Queen a5, but queen knight c d6 is First hanging. First of all, we'll, as well. we'll start by this. <laughs> yeah. And after knight c6, we'll think. But okay, I mean, now we can go knight c3, knight d5 or something. Maybe, I am extremely confused. Maybe he can just give up the um, b5 pawn and play knight e7 queen, on queen e2, knight e7, and knight c6 with castle. How would you do that? Queen e2, knight e7. No, hang on. We, we, this is black, oh, black to move so far. Yeah. Uh, so knight e7, queen, queen e2. e2, knight c6 or castle. But you are a pawn down. Yeah. I mean, and yes. two bishops is not enough compensation. Well, this one is not very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it was on some decent square, maybe, but it's not very impressive on g7. I'll just take and play g3, not bd2. Oh, and what if I go b4 instead of knight c6, and then on queen b5 I have knight c6? That is true. That is true. And b4 actually I like because the knight yeah, is it, not coming out yeah, very it, easily. It, it hampers my development quite reasonably, but maybe I can still play d4 here. Okay, knight e7 played, so we will we will find out reasonably quickly, I guess. So queen e2 is one move. Uh, c takes d6 followed by something is another idea. There's also knight a3. A3, yeah. Which to go to c4. Yeah, which is maybe slightly smarter than knight c3. Because after b4 you do have this knight c4 move. And this entire complex gets under a lot of pressure. Yeah, I expect knight a3, queen a5 maybe. Not oh, d6 allow. is hanging. d6 so. is still hanging, right. No, all of this is extremely interesting, especially because, okay, Magnus is playing um, slower and significantly slower than Fabi, but he is still playing quite fast, and uh, that really suggests that this is something that they looked at and they feel this is fine, but it doesn't look fine. <laughs> well, he definitely needs to be booked up with engine lines here, because... Yeah. Uh, uh, to optically, it really does not yeah, look in a, in, in, nice. in a practical game, I'd be extremely scared here with black. Queen e2 already played by, by Fabiano, by the way, so we, we guessed that correctly. Queen e2, direct threat that we want to take. So far, five. your suggestion before is the only one that even remotely, I think, uh, works for black. Yeah, because we really need to... Or maybe we can try... I don't think anything yeah, else works. Yeah, we cannot try anything. Honestly, this is the only move in the position which doesn't appear to lose, to, in, to my eyes. Maybe I'm missing something, but I think everything else is close to lost. 
uh, the, the lost for black. And people are saying uh, before is yeah, forced. Before and uh, people are saying it's even in some uh, opening books they've seen with white having a slight edge. But yeah, uh, if Magnus got here in something like 15 to 17 minutes without actually knowing what he's doing, uh, it's a very bad case of nerves. It will be very difficult yeah. for him. No, I mean, he can. maybe the position is just not very bad after before and he might still be okay, but I just don't, like, if this is not some kind of home prep, I, I don't understand this time management. How do you think he feels that he's really getting outplayed in uh, the openings and not outplayed, but outprepared? No, I think I think that comment of his uh, was specifically uh, about the games where he was playing white. Uh, maybe he also said something. No, but I think I think that was said after game four, right? This is game five, and there hasn't been any press conferences since. Yeah. So it was after game four, and that was, I think, him referring specifically to how his games two and four went. I don't think he um, meant his entire preparation compared to Fabi. I think in the black games he hasn't. I mean, game one he clearly was much better prepared than Fabi. Uh, yeah, uh, that is true, and he was even winning in first game, but mm -hmm. he didn't manage to convert that advantage. Wow, exciting, but I'm really happy to see such sharp position on the board. Yeah, but it might, you know, some other lines we were we were looking at, uh, you know, in analysis, they were uh, a lot sharper than what we uh, what we currently have. And so far, I, you know, it's uh, not that easy for me to talk and think at the same time, but I've been trying to refute this and I'm not really getting very far. It feels like optically white should be better, but it's not a great advantage because it seems like this pawn on B4 survives. B4 is on the board, but I have to mention that Fabiana is playing so far, so fast that probably he's playing the best moves uh, suggested by engines. So moves like knight a3 and others that we uh, were discussing probably is no better than queen e2. Yeah, no, Fabi, Fabi clearly is very much still in his preparation. I'm, you know, even slightly surprised the the, the next move hasn't followed the uh, instantly. instantly. Because, I mean, if you play, okay, okay. Quincy 2 played, and yeah, <laughs> that was what I expected, that, you know, something will be played quite quickly here by Fabiano. And I think the point might be that I was trying, if you remember, I show, we were showing the line Queen B5, Queen B5 check, Knight yeah. C6, and D4. D4 yeah. And the issue with that was that if Black takes, takes and castles, if you take on C6 here, after BC6, both your bishop on A1 and the Queen are hanging. Double attack. And it's very awkward for White. But if you play Queen C4, as Fabiano did, and you meet Knight C6 with D4 once again, Black Here's takes, you take. If black, black once again take, just simply castles, in this position the queen is not hanging and I have time to take on g7 and then take on b4 with a very large advantage. Yeah. So I think this probably is the explanation for uh, queen, c4. queen c4 over queen b5 check. Is knight c6 the only move? Definitely it is most natural yeah, one to but uh, defend there. Yeah. There's <laughs> also queen c7. I was wondering if there is maybe some point to playing queen, queen c7 here. But I don't really trust it, if I'm honest with you. There's a number of things uh, that feel extremely dangerous there. There is also queen c4 is... Uh, c5 pawn is there, so maybe we can try queen c7 to pin this pawn because then c takes d d6 would not be the move, as in all other variations. Queen c7 here. Yeah, but first of all, I'm not sure this is so equal. Uh, yeah, definitely not, but uh, we did not lose the pawn. Yeah, it's important that the <laughs> material is still equal, but like some kind of a position, uh, I'm, I'm struggling to find the most precise square for this queen, because I would like to stop knight c6 from happening, but I'm also... Like, I would like to play queen b5 check to stop knight c6 because bishop then the pawn would be hanging, but after bishop d7 I don't have a good square. So, but just let's discuss it structurally then, since I can't really make my mind up about where this queen goes. We play a move, I don't know, queen a4 check, let's say knight c6, knight c3, 
Castle. Castles, knight d5, followed by, I don't know, h2, h3 to stop bishop g4. It doesn't look good. It's not unplayable for black because, once again, we finally managed to, you know, finish development. The king is in a safe place and black does have two bishops. But in general, structures like this, white plays d3, plays c4, like, let's continue for a second. We go h3, let's say bishop b6, we go c4. And it doesn't really matter we have m middle game or end game because this uh, pawn structure is fixed and we will have d5 square for the knight in the end game and in the middle game. So yeah. uh, trading pieces would not make black's life easier. And there's there's this backward pawn on b7, which is a constant target. Like white wants to play rook b1 next and just put a lot of pressure on the black queen side. Counterplay with f5 can be met simply by uh, d3 and in most cases black just doesn't have enough pieces to create a serious uh, serious amount of play on the king side here i probably blundered the h3 pawn so oh. I, but we are <laughs> we are giving this line as an example yeah. <laughs> we, are, we aren't trying to analyze it properly because i don't think it will happen on the board but i'm just giving you an outline of strategic ideas but also there is this this move which needs to be Default. properly assessed yeah. because once again, the point is if you take, the bishop is hanging, and if you castle, I can sidestep the pin along the c-file just in time to play c takes d6 and win a lot of material. So after d4, it feels to me like e d4 is just more or less losing, which means black has to make some other move. Maybe bishop e6. Bishop e6 or castles even. And white has the move queen takes before here. Let's say dc5, queen takes c5. And okay, maybe this endgame is a draw and maybe it isn't. But pawn is a pawn. Yeah, still. but it is it is a it is a pawn, it is a doubled pawn. But the bishop on g7 is stupid and the pawn on b7 might be weak in in, in later, later. Knight game. d2, knight c4? Or knight, knight d2, knight c3 yeah. to or even that corner. in some yeah. positions. It's very possible black just holds this after something like f6 and then uh, you know bishop b6, rook c8, bishop f8, and the pawn on pawn on c5 is weak but it's an it's a decision that you know we cannot be taken lightly but maybe he yeah he cannot even try rook bishop e6 because i wanted that after d4 lines mm -hmm. uh i wanted that after queen before i take on uh, d4 but then d6 pawn yeah. is hanging with uh no, I think double so, attack some kind of an endgame like this is extremely likely here after d4 because i i really don't see how black avoids it uh we can start by d takes c5, but you once again you're sort of inviting trouble here. Maybe after knight takes c5, maybe dc5 is playable though. This is a move I kind of disregarded when I was suggesting d4. Oh yeah. So okay, <coughs> knight c6 is one choice. Queen c7 is another choice. Is there anything else we're missing? Well, black doesn't have that luxury to. <laughs> choose from a lot of moves because no. before point uh, before Pe pawn is people hanging. in chat are such well, queen, queen, a, a five. queen a5 played yeah queen a5 it was suggested in the chat and the line was uh, c6 bishop b6 yeah. yeah and queen c7 queen c7 d takes c7 but that looks okay for black doesn't that it looks playable queen, because queen. we did not castle and king mm -hmm. d7 might be I, I i i was kind of spluttering as so surprised because i forgot the bishop only one is hanging Oh. I was wondering, <laughs> like I thought cd bishop e6, I can just play queen d3 yeah. or queen e2 somewhere. And I thought, why is this suddenly so great for black? But black probably just takes on a1 and goes queen king takes e7 here. Although, I mean, once again, how good is this? Exactly how good is this? Sacrificing the queen is lost because... Uh, yeah, you don't have enough material. You for, don't, have you enough don't, you material. don't get enough material. So you have to play something like queen a5 or queen a6 somewhere. Queen a3, maybe? How is I this? I will still give this yeah, check. check. And if only the rook was already on c8, black would be maybe even better. But the rook isn't on c8, and you have to go to a square where you will cut off all the oxygen to that rook, like king f8 or somewhere, where you get stuck with this horrible piece. And this looks very dangerous. And if we get the end game, knight versus bishop, then knight is, will be better. Well, it depends which bishop. I mean the G, uh, yeah, if G7. Yeah, if bishop. it's a G, G7 bishop, black yeah. is in trouble for sure. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, go through this a bit slower. Maybe the idea is to just play knight c6 here. 
bishop b2 and castle and say that you know these pieces are not that great and i will eventually play rook d8 and pawn d6 and will be waived. yeah and you will pick up but yeah once again it's a very very committal decision but this is interesting because black was suffering to develop uh, in the first stage and here actually white won the pawn but now we are suffering to develop because mm, our and, knight on B, b1 is and uh, our favorite favorite user galactic who sasha is now constantly <laughs> referring to is suggesting that uh, knight c6 followed by queen a2 is very strong well it is yeah it's nice to problems have, with the bishop yeah it's nice to have the the, the entire galactic in your corner <laughs> And people are also complimenting my arrowing game today. I, I, You're it's, doing great. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> nice, it's nice that people notice that I, I draw far few. I mean, so far, we're only half an hour in, so I'm sure a lot of completely ridiculous arrows will still come on this show. But so far, I'm doing, I'm doing way better than normal. Yeah. With such games, we are more focused because we have so much tactics going on and so much things to calculate. Yeah, and then to get back to the line that the chat was giving us, queen c7, queen c7, dc7, I assume you play knight c6 because this pawn is hanging and you also want to stop d4. So you play knight c6 and your plan is just to play king d7 and pick this guy up. And then you're happy you didn't castle yet. Yeah, and then you're <laughs> you're happy full stop because, you know, yeah. material will be equal and this pawn on b4 is actually not a weakness. It's a very nice restricting pawn which cuts off uh, good squares from, from these two guys. King is very important in the end games when mm. in the middle game we cannot uh, run with king and take such pawn if queens were on board. But in the end game you can just uh, play king d7, king c7 and be very happy. You don't need to hide it in the corner. Yeah, and uh, actually in, in particular now that Magnus played queen a5, uh, I think I can sort of explain the 117 we see in the corner there instead of against 137 for Fabiano. I think. Uh, Magnus, uh, I'm pretty sure Magnus had looked at this at some point, probably preparing for the match, but they did not repeat this line before today specifically. And this 117 is him taking enough time to make sure he doesn't misremember anything. Because yeah. I don't think you uh, take all these decisions against somebody who is blitzing his replies if you don't know. So Magnus was just making very, very sure that he doesn't he doesn't mix anything up. Do but. you think he was expecting that Fabiano would still go for bishop c6 and then maybe he would be one to deviate and play b takes c6 instead of uh, d? Or mm. he would go anyway for d takes c6 and improve on castles? I think he did He did expect, uh, as, as I, uh, I mean, I, I said on air that I expected Fabi not to deviate because there didn't seem to be any reason to deviate from, you know, the one game in the match where the opening with White went for went quite well for him. But, yeah, what, what exactly what Magnus expected, I'm not entirely sure. She takes d6 on the board. Uh, I think not playing bishop b6 here would be kind of strange. I mean, you can start with knight c6, but I think you give White... Uh, more options and i don't think uh, giving white more options is necessarily all that wise here i don't see how it's refuted though huh. yeah we need to develop first the knight and the bishop bishop is hanging right now because if white if white is forced to play bishop b2 here i mean the bishop is hanging then after bishop e6 we are kind of likely to get into those lines that galactic was giving us and uh, we like those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Yeah. And we cannot try something sort of knight g5, let him castle, and then try to push d7 mm -hmm. or like queen d5. And so Tatalik, who is very active in chat today, is saying that after queen knight c6, d4, queen a1, d5 is quite strong. And after oh. knight a7, something like queen takes b4, followed, I guess, by knight c3. Doesn't really look... Or maybe after just c4, c5. Let's say black castles, and we just start by playing c4 here. And then we play knight c3, and then we play c4, c5. And I have this fantastic yeah, uh, mass of pawns in the center, which more than uh, which compensates, uh, you, know, for, you know, much more than compensates for the sacrificed piece. And yeah, Magnus plays uh, bishop b6. 
which is most expected. Queen c7. I guess it's only move, queen c7. Well, we don't know that. Uh, we suspect it might be because once again, Galactic said so, and who are we to disagree with him? But um, <laughs> so far, I, I I just don't think White is better after Queen C seven takes takes Knight C six. I was looking at some ways to exploit the fact that after Knight G five, the Bishop might have to go back, but I have a feeling Bishop A two is very strong. Just to keep the f7 pawn under control. I want to play king d7 without maybe even wasting any time on h7, h6. Right, and I cannot even... Uh, I mean, there is this idea. What before. what I wanted to, to check was maybe white can play f4 here. But... I, oops, sorry, not f5. f6 was what I was planning to play. <laughs> f6, knight goes somewhere... Okay, if it goes to f3, maybe even taking I'm is sorry, okay. c8 is uh, possible. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Okay, okay, I've gone mad earlier than usual, um, yeah. but okay, I mean, if bishop c8 is not really refuted yet, but also I'm thinking maybe we can even take time to uh, take time to take with the king, and then we will pick it up with the rook. Because once again, now, you know, white has to spend like tempi to uh, get the pieces out of the corner, there is a backward pawn on c2, we can... Count, I'm thinking get decent counterplay against which pawn a1 is kind of stupid this seems very playable for black bishop h6 ideas like knight b3 looks natural but then I can actually try attacking the c2 pawn like something like knight a7 if you play rook c1 bishop h6 is immediately a huge problem so you have to but play rook I have a feeling that black is kind of outplaying white or I not. like this for black, yeah. I don't think it's a problem. It's probably not bad for, for white, but I don't think white has anything. But black's pieces are more active, and now our bishops are equal, probably, because my a1 bishop is not doing anything as well. Yeah. And f6, bishop f8, black bishop can come into play pretty quickly, or bishop h6. Mm. And uh, another thing that we should look at, and uh, something that chat... Uh, suggested is maybe d7 check here but i'm not sure it's great to be honest because i think i can just take with the bishop and people were suggesting knight g5 castles and bishop b2 but these pieces will start going back h6 and then once again bishop e6 and the queen has to go back to somewhere like d3 or a2 and black can play rook c8 it just looks fantastic for black yeah, yeah. but i don't think that this is obvious preparation <laughs> though i'm a bit surprised that he takes uh, a bit of time here he played uh, everything pretty fast and uh, this is not the position where you stop your preparation this is probably the position where you start looking at yeah, that is true. engine and uh, that is true and also uh, d7 check someone in the in chat I'm, i am kind of taking a lot of hints for, from chat today because as you can see on my own, I allow c7, c8, queen check, which is not a great sign. There is queen d8 here, followed by queen takes a1. Oh, wow. <laughs> king d8 is... Uh... Might be a bit of a problem for white. <laughs> king d8 is... Uh... Yeah. D yeah. Queen is hanging, bishop is hanging, and... There's no way we can... Uh... No, I think it just wins, yeah. So far I, I can't find anything wrong with it whatsoever. I think it just wins. So d7 is not a move. So it's between those moves with the queen backwards and also there is the queen c7, which we suspect is the main line. But so far, to my eyes, it feels like black should be fine there. I also think so. And... I, I I would still think that um, maybe White has slightly more chances if he goes backwards, takes this knight because this knight c6 protecting the b4 pawn. How annoying! No, but uh, I don't think Black is taking on a1. I think the whole point is oh, we're yeah, playing yeah. knight c6, and then we're, then we're playing queen a2. Oh yeah. I think this is the issue. I, I absolutely agree with you about the positions uh, where black takes and we take on e7, in particular if we have enough time to play knight c3 next. I think black probably is 
uh, advised not to allow knight c3 here and take only in the next move. But that's a whole different story because I think the whole point is knight c6. And d4 here? Can we try? Or simple e takes d4? I think we probably can take e g. Still, our bishop is hanging. We can take on d4. e5 mm -hmm. is nothing. Knight d2, maybe? Yeah, knight d2. d3? I don't even necessarily. Maybe I do need d3 because it does win a full piece here. Yeah? yeah, it wins. But knight b3 is it? Oh, knight b3 is not in the end. Well, maybe d7 or. Yeah, you take with the queen, with the queen. I take on a1. And you do have. Because knight b3, we have bishop takes bishop b3, b3, obviously. Yeah. But I think d7 check can be ignored by king e7. I don't think this works out for white. e5, you simply take, right? 5. 95, oh. Yeah, I think I take with uh, in some sequence. Maybe I can start by doing this even just to make sure I, it doesn't yeah, get stuck. Yeah, there is no knight c4 because now the king is very well protected mm -hmm. with uh, pieces and yeah. no attack. Black is actually quite decently coordinated to just handle all these tactics. And I don't, I mean, you can take, take and play queen g4, but I guess if if the worst comes to the queen, like I, I, think, I, I think I can still play f6 here and I'm not really all that worried. It doesn't work tactically. And also, I think maybe your original suggestion was stronger now that I look at it. You, 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 was, you were arguing for knight takes e5, and I think knight takes e5 is just better. Because here there is not even this queen d4 idea. And it's just very bad for white in general. Yeah, I expect queen c7. To I think queen c7 probably will end up, play, uh, end up being played. And black, black should take it. Yeah, black has no other moves here. Uh, so takes takes. I think knight c6 is also pretty much forced, because I think f4, f6, d4 is uh, exactly what white would dream of. Yeah. Immediately breaking the structure open, developing, you know, getting squares for the bishop on a1 and so on. So you play knight c6, and uh, Suat is saying white has to push for d4? an almost immediate d4 break yeah. somehow. Queen c7 is on the board, by yeah. the way. So Queen we are, on the board. you know, a combination of us plus plus the chat. <laughs> are absolutely crushing it today and uh yeah but this is very concrete position where you need to calculate you cannot look at it superficially it's like really move by move yeah i think it's a very concrete position although now that the queens are off i think this position you can start uh you can start using your common sense to uh to work out what goes where and how you approach things because uh, the difficult thing was getting here with black. I think the difficult thing after you you get hit by uh, before on move on move six. I really feel that for white it is important critical moment because if he plays slow like we showed with d3 knight d2, then black's play is very easy because of the open c file mm -hmm. and active pieces. But if he does something energetic with d4, things still might be sharp and. Uh, maybe some sacrifices but fast development of this knight on b1 because it's a big problem for white yeah white needs to uh d4 is not even necessarily about the change of structure it's just you need to do something about those two pieces on the queen side which aren't currently doing anything at all and uh, uh pushing for fast d4 actually solves that problem so let's look at this rook g1 there's also the immediate d4. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, immediate d4, take and d5 maybe. Or I don't like knight d2. Knight d2 might be better. How do we take with black? Because there's... I thought with e pawn. I'm wondering if there is some sense to taking with the knight. But okay, let's... let's uh, Try make... to keep pieces. <laughs> yeah, because the knight on c6 also protects this guy. So it's a useful piece. Knight d2, let's say. King d7. Um, Feels like white could be easily could be worse here. Yeah. Because the bishops are yeah, very strong. Five. No, exactly. Like some position, I'm not even going to try to defend the d4 pawn. I'm just going to no. claim. I'm just going to claim that this yeah. is better for me. Yeah. Two bishops, and. Eventually, and this will get traded for this. Yeah. And this is actually best case scenario for white because in some cases you'll just lose the c2 pawn. No, this is like an absolutely dream Berlin. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it. It's a kind of a Berlin structure, but black made so many advances on the queen side. And the bishops are reasonably connected, and the king is active, and the white king is on g1. So this is like Berlin on steroids. 
I have felt I have a feeling that we are somehow missing some very energetic uh, thing or some oh, but I think something. That knight bg2 I think is a bit slow. Yeah. I think you actually are supposed Looked, to play rook d1 yeah. here. And this might force black to make a draw in some slightly unpleasant endgame. Like d3 we go. is not there now. But you cannot take once again. You 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 try. Oh to yeah. You try. Oh to yeah. I, I, tr I try to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very smart. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to repeat. Yeah. My my achievements of yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you did. So like something like this maybe. Uh, maybe where this is headed. Like rook takes before rook d8 and. Experience shows that black generally makes draw, makes a draw reasonably yeah. comfortably in positions like this, like f3, we give a check, or king f2, and I don't know, rook c1. Black shouldn't have any problems. Well, I mean, some problems for sure, rook b2, I'm not sure how close, to, I mean, this is, this is not an immediate draw at all. You probably need to be slightly more precise somewhere. So let's have a look at this again, rook d1. There is d3 in this position, but I don't know if it's any good. <laughs> that's a cute move. D3! That's a cute move. That's very nice. But that actually might be a reason to start with rook d1. Because if you start with rook d1, you don't allow any of that uh, any of that nonsense. I was wondering if it's okay for uh, black to take uh, the pawn with the rook. Let's say I play king e7. e7? Uh, I thought so. Okay. Uh, yeah, if I take it... You will end up probably having to take twice no, once again. I, no, I don't want to take it. I okay. wanted to play rook... No, d5 is... d5 uh, is too much of a threat. Right. Yeah, okay, I have to take it. And now you probably have to take twice again. Yeah, and I have to because, take twice. Uh, because I was I was always trying to make this work, but bishop b6 is just too strong everywhere. Yeah. So you have to take twice. And we will get into the same sort of same endgame, but... Yeah. Just the rook. Difference is that rook is so. Yeah, uh, maybe I can go rook b2 here. Because if white gets f3 followed by knight d2. Okay, and Fabi has done something completely different. c3. Yeah, that's an interesting choice. Well, that Oops, is another. Forgot, um, forgot to mute, mute the device. <laughs> Give me a sec. That, that's probably another interesting and critical option for white because if we get rid of the b4 pawn then uh, our knight on b1 will finally go to uh, c3 and after knight c3 we'll have we will have this d5 square yeah d5 and b5 as and well b5 which is as well. uh... yeah and black still needs to uh, waste two tempos to take the c7 pawn c7 pawn is extra pawn and very dangerous yeah and honestly I'd be surprised if this still wasn't Fabi's preparation, so... It is, probably. Yeah, I think I think it has to be. It, it is. I think, that, I think it has to be. I like move c3. It is very direct. It is extremely direct, yeah. And... Uh, very important. b3, yeah. yeah. Very importantly, you would like to play b3, have this f wonderful passer, and also keep these two pieces... Okay, stupid arrows are coming back. <laughs> Uh, these two pieces uh, in check, but after d4, you will have to waste more tempi on, uh, you know, unnecessary things because d5 is just a tremendously strong threat. This doesn't look great, so let's have a look at the more forcing reply. So we take, take, we go king d7. Does the knight go here or here? Both are probably right, here, I guess, because if you go knight b5, I do have bishop c4. Yeah, and. Um... This doesn't look bad. D5 is supported with E4. Like there is there is rook B1. But I can maybe even be extremely ambitious and consider bishop D3. To trying to pick this guy up. Yeah, but also not. but also I think just in general, if I play something like rook A8 here, bishop C3, and I take on B5 and take on E7, shouldn't lose. But maybe white is still... Uh, yeah, here white is slightly better. You play yeah. something like g4, the pawn on e5 is kind of weak. And more importantly, this bishop on g7 is just incredibly stupid. You get these endgames from uh, Grunfelds. Not with the pawn on g2, of course, but these types yeah. of endgames you get from Grunfelds and you don't enjoy them very much. It is interesting because in the endgames you would love to have this passer, but now the pieces are so active, white's rook on b5, that... 
B7 pawn is rather weak than mm -hmm. strength. Yeah. Okay, so... But also, as mentioned, knight d5 might be a bigger issue because you cannot play rook c8 or rook a8 because of this fork. Taking um, makes this pawn incredibly weak. Uh, so maybe you have to play king d6. Trying to get the d5 knight. Yeah, I'm actually planning to <coughs> take on d5 twice, but I have to calculate knight g5 first and foremost. Because in the end of that variation, the pawn f7 will be hanging, and I'm not yeah. sure I want to allow that. And you cannot take on d5. I mean, I can do this, but it, this leaves me with this kind of horrible structure. And once yeah. again, I don't think this is that enjoyable for black. Uh, though knight has d4 square, yeah. right? I mean, it's maybe this is more playable than the Double previous edged. version, actually. Yeah. Rook b8, knight d4, try to push the b pawn. And this will be very different endgame if knight d4 and bishop d4, ed4 happens, then black is happy because he there is no bad pawn structure mm -hmm. anymore, and the bishop won't be that bad, because yeah. I have pawn e6 and d5 square is uh, pretty much controlled. Mm -hmm. And also, um, before we go f further in depth with all these variations, let's consider what happens if you play queen d7 here, white takes. White is currently two pawns up, b5 is threatened, and the pawn on e5 is hanging. I don't think this is great. I mean, we have to mention it because it's it's clearly an option Black will consider, but I don't think he will consider it for very long. Yeah. Like rook a8 here, but we can play both knight c3 and maybe even bishop c3. And b5 by, is and b5 still is a threat. Right. Once again, maybe you can play for like full-on positional compensation here. Play b7, b5, then take on c7, and then we will only be one one pawn down, and maybe not doing so poorly. But once again, it's very, uh, it's a very committal decision, and it's uh, I'm not sure if I can trust my calculations here. And uh, uh, good news, uh, we've uh, we've survived the first hour, so uh, <laughs> in reasonably short time we will uh, we will get the superstar that is Alexander expert. Grishuk. Yeah, the the expert. We will get. Uh, Alexander on the show and he will tell us everything we need to know about this position and all the following positions <laughs> uh, in this game. So perhaps we should we should we should take that uh, little bit of a break right now and we will be back uh, shortly, uh, all three of us. Stay tuned. And we're back shorter than expected, and still, <laughs> still just the two of us. Uh, uh, Alexander will be uh, a little bit late. He he does have a you know a full f full life outside of chess. Let's put it like this, and um, we're still getting full value of his of his expertise and wisdom and and wit. So I'm yeah. sure I'm sure we will not begrudge him an occasional 10 minutes. <laughs> I should have actually checked my phone, but I was, you know, so panicked while setting it on silent that I failed to see the, the <laughs> message informing me that he will not be here at five sharp. And in the meantime, Magnus does play King D7, which is uh, quite remarkable. And once again, I have a sneaking suspicion they are comparing notes even now. Should be. Because if you are not ready with uh, engine lines and with computer here, 
It, it is difficult to play. Yeah, King D7, people are saying it's a very natural move. Yes, it's a very natural move, but it, it also is a move which, for the time being, once white takes on D4, and I think white does take on D4, because if you play on B4, sorry, if you start with D4 here, I think Rook A8 is like the major reason why this is strong, because we're hitting the Rook with Bishop on A1, and regardless of how white decides to protect it, Either be it knight bd2 or F bishop c3, b2, so then b takes c3 is a very important tempo followed by e takes d4, and black could easily just be better here potentially. Like knight c3, we take knight b5. We can maybe even play rook a4 here, trying to hold on for the pawn on d to, to the pawn on d4 for the time being. Prepare something like rook b4. So yeah, uh, I think c before is natural. Yeah. Black probably plays rook a8 here. And what do we expect here? Maybe knight c3 more yeah, than bishop c3? Knight c3, maybe we actually have to consider this. I'm wondering... We if... have to definitely, because knight c2 is a big threat. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe rook b1, but... I probably it's play knight c2 anyway, yeah. uh, because I force you to occupy the b-file here, and now I will finally uh, restore the material balance. And uh, Yeah, I cannot do anything with this oh, knight. There's rook c1, knight. yeah, there's rook c1. Mm -hmm. It's not as, bishop as obvious. Yeah, three. If I have to play bishop b3, it gets kind of tricky, although I, I don't see how it's refuted for now. Maybe it's not refuted. We, we, we can... Oh, we can. I, I, I thought maybe we can try d4. And if we just take... Take... I wanted knight b5 sort of things, but... It well, it's good, just, it's good it enough for equality, simplifi yeah. Simplification, yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, for, for people worried that Grishuk is not here yet, he will be, he will be with us uh, soon, but not... Uh, not right now, we'll have to wait an additional maybe 10-15 minutes, but as mentioned, um, it's it's all good, people. He'll be here and he'll <laughs> be his usual... Uh, Just a bit of us for the moment. Yeah. Well, this I think, I mean, it's, it's fine for white, but I don't think we're necessarily pushing for advantage here. Okay, so rook a8, can we try bishop b2 maybe? To have... Yeah, CBC before played in the meantime, so we, we are discussing the... And the idea is that if I play rook a2... Yeah, I missed rook a2, to be honest. I I was hoping to have the c3 square for the knight, but right. I think rook a2 is quite strong here. Because I, I don't really want to play bishop c1, I feel like this is taking... Uh, taking Though knight c3 will be with tempo, but... Well, uh, but uh, the, yeah, the rook not, can get to a1 yeah, now. It's not worth it. Well, I think we're lucky if we equalize here with white. Knight d3 coming. Yeah, knight d3. Uh, I mean, you do have bishop b2, but then you've misplaced all your pieces and the material is equal. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a clearly pleasant endgame for black with two bishops against a bishop and a knight. Okay, so uh, we expect rook a8. And knight, knight, knight c3, knight b4. It's kind of bothering as well with knight gets into play with so many mm -hmm. uh, threats. C2, so knight options, knight c3, bishop c3, b5 I don't think is an option. Rook e8 has, has been played uh, on the board, so this is the current position now. <clears throat> and b1 knight, oh, that's uh, bothering me. We still need to develop it. Yeah, maybe bishop c3 is the most... Yeah, bishop c3, and I'm wondering if my b5 idea is correct, because it's it looks very beautiful. It looks uh, like this is a kind of a move you like to make in a practical it game. Does. You're two pawns down, and you just make a quiet positional move to make sure that this pawn is fixed as a weakness, and you don't allow b4, b5 touching my uh, knight on c6. But maybe rook c1 is something I should be more worried about, because it stops me from taking on c7 because of the pin. Oh, that's nice. And he doesn't want to lose tempo on f6 because then d4 will... Uh... Yeah, it's not even the tempo, it's just you don't want to close, you yeah, don't want to close wanna the bishop close on g7, bishop. because yeah, allowing... Once the bishop closes, d4 becomes a, a very important resource for white. White is clearly better here because 
d5 is threatened. And then he can try rook a7 instead of f6, right? Rook a7. Yeah, but it's. But maybe c8 no, yes. still, yeah? C8. c8 followed by bishop b5 is yeah. actually winning on the spot, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So after rook c1, we are defending sort of the c3 pawn with uh, tactics. Yeah, the c7 pawn. And the open file. So if we close it with bishop c4, then d3. I might think d3 be... is quite strong because you cannot take the pin shifts yeah. to the d file. D3 might be annoying. Mm -hmm. And what else can we try? We can try to bother this knight maybe with the bishop a2 uh, instead of bishop c4 or something. But once again, it seems very slow. It, it does. And if, you know, if the best idea we have in this position is to give up this <laughs> yeah. bishop and, you know, waste two tempi to give yeah. up this this bishop just to win this pawn. But then something went wrong. Yeah, we are worse and it's just a question of how much worse. So let's have a look at other moves instead of b5. Can we just maybe take it? And after b5, b5. we'll just go knight d4 and we'll say the pawn on b5 is very weak and we're not worried about anything. We can try to do that. Because this knight on b1 is still, you know, very much out of play. My only worry is that our knight is still on b1, not developed, and now b5 pawn will be target. Yeah, b5, b5 will definitely be a target, regardless of how you take on g4. Like, if you take with the knight, you go something like bishop b4, and it just gets... Well, it doesn't get picked up immediately, because well, you, you, you can get into this incredibly... <laughs> unfortunate yeah. setup which but uh, he has something like, like rook bishop a2 d3 rook b4 yeah i have yeah. a feeling this might just lose because you you now end up with two pieces which have no moves yeah. and, uh, and my plan is it's actually quite nice my plan is i will play king c5 and then i will play rook b2 i think oh, e4 pawn was also checked yeah if oh yeah, yeah okay no but then yeah, yeah if you, you with the e pawn also hanging yeah. i think this could just be extremely bad for like like f3, for instance, we go king c5. And it's amazing and that these two. two pieces cannot come out. Yeah, like this is a very instructive setup because we've we've cut this yeah. knight off completely. Then we take on b5, we come to c4, and the knight still has no moves. This is yeah, how this, black wins. Yeah, this is just resignable. <laughs> uh, obviously, none of this will happen. But just an, as an illustration of how you can use one extremely misplaced piece to uh, play for a win, even in positions where you are currently down some material okay bishop c3 hasn't been played yet so yeah maybe so. knight d4 is uh, is something he's worrying about and it's not that difficult move to make i mean after taking a yeah. c7 well you're not forced to play b5 but uh, what are you doing if you're not taking if you're not playing b5 like, bishop took knight's because, place yeah i think king b6 king b5 is quite a strong idea even if the, the pawn is not there yet and once again, this is definitely an endgame, which means that the king can very easily become a you know an active participant in what um, uh, in what's happening on the board. You don't have to worry about king safety anymore. You actually black just has a much more active king, and it's a big trump in his favor. Yeah, I really don't like it because uh, the rook has a file, black's rook has a file, and we still need to develop our knight, which is actually controlling a very nice a3 spot. So if we played something like d3, knight d2, then rook a3 might be annoying. And also this b4 pawn might be weak with something like a rook a4 or... Yeah, all of these things are true, and, this and it is this time of the day, game. time for me to do oh this, we this will weird have sasha dance. soon yeah earphone time we just need to provide him with the important details uh and he'll be he'll be all set do we need to take a little break for that or yeah probably um... probably we uh now we do we need like a minute and a half to set up all the technical things so we'll uh we'll retake our break uh, in this in this sharp end game, and we will be back uh, with Sasha. With Sasha, which is uh, very welcome news, obviously. See you soon.
Uh, actually, don't go anywhere because uh, seemingly we are okay. So let's let's see if that works. <laughs> All right. Hello there. Hopefully, hey, looking looking. Yes. Yeah, we are we are live. Yeah. We are live and you're looking even more fabulous than usual. So, uh, <laughs> looking good. <laughs> yeah. Very, very nice to see you. I'm afraid to ask what, yeah. what happened there. <laughs> yeah. Good evening, Peter. Good evening, Sopico. Good evening, uh, dear Chess24 viewers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well done. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, so today it seems like uh, maybe the most interesting part of the game is already done. Uh, I don't know, I mean, it's hard to say. Maybe the same game is quite interesting. I'm just wondering uh, because computers give zero zeros, but maybe it's quite double edged. I mean, firstly, maybe it's a bit dangerous for white, I guess. Yeah, we were wondering yeah. because despite despite currently even two extra pawns, we so far we haven't found a single line where white was better. I mean, white probably shouldn't be worse yet, but I don't think black really risks anything at all here. At least this is our current thinking. Yeah, I don't know. It was a weird uh, preparation by Fabiano. I mean, this B4, it's not like it's something new, even not even close to it. Even I, I think two years ago, Bacro played it against me. We yeah. have that information uh, yeah. in uh, Paris. Uh, in Paris, rapid, so it's nothing new. I mean, it's a little bit uh, cheap uh, to hope that Magnus simply doesn't know this move. When uh, okay, it's clear that Magnus prepared this Sveshnikov uh, and uh, Rosolimo with G6 for World Championship match. Uh, it's not like. He's playing it just from the scratch or something. Mm, uh, I mean, it's just uh, 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 either some major blunder by his team during preparation, or, or I, I don't know what, what. You don't think this is a good. I don't know what. You don't what, think this idea is good. They were hoping for. You don't think this idea is good enough for one game, just to test, just to test what he <coughs> what he has there. No, I mean, okay, if you play open tournament, maybe, but not in a World Championship match when your guy has prepared one opening. Okay, I mean, he's supposed to prepare it quite, you know, decently and make an all-around preparation and not just prepare one line. Or, uh, I mean, there is, okay, rookie one is like top move, so this... Uh, castle and rookie one is like white uh, second main option after uh, after fourth uh, move uh, bishop, bishop takes c6 yeah. this castle and rookie second main option so you, okay you are not supposed to surprise with that and that after e5 before is nothing new and then i don't know it's just kind of forced after that right yeah, it seems it seems very forced, and uh, we were uh, somewhat surprised because we did not appreciate just how decent this endgame is for Black, and we were I was very curious why Magnus went for this position after let's say BC five ninety seven because it looks like it could be dangerous for Black, but it seems like uh, it seems he just has uh, you know very precise preparation and he is not worried at all. Maybe maybe. Okay, my now I have some theory what what was going on. That the main move here might actually be C takes D six, with an idea of D four next move. Okay, mm -hmm. and then actually maybe White can hope for some slight edge. What do you think? I mean, I mean very slight, but but at least it looks quite risk free for White. No? Yeah, it should be absolutely uh, risk free. Yeah. Yeah, take yeah. Just go for these end games. Yeah. Maybe it's just some 
kind of a fourth draw, but uh, it. I mean, uh, we will just uh, we will just try to attack this B pawn. I guess. Mm -hmm. I guess. I don't. Know, maybe like bishop d4, queen d4, queen d4, knight d4, b4, or something like this. But uh, and maybe it was his main uh, preparation. And here, yeah, knight d2. I guess with the knight d2. I don't. I don't even understand why this is equal. To be honest, I think this is better for white. Is it forced though to go? No, for I mean this? it's just very forced. Like castle now, rook d1, rook d8. And ah, there's rook d2 there in the. Yeah, I mean, I cannot take because knight c6. Yeah. This is nice. Oh, oh sorry, yeah, rook d2, of course. Yeah, sorry. And knight e7 would not work because back rank. Yeah, the back rank problems are still still too strong here. Yeah, and if you play knight 2 f3 instead of rook take b4, there is knight c6. Yeah, anyway. you, can, you can play knight c6. So yeah. Yeah, so actually here white can uh, end up being slightly worse, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's but true. But I mean, yeah, but from the beginning, okay, it was just uh, equal. I guess white could play you know, like c3 instead of knight d2. I mean, uh, it's for sure not worse for black from the be for white for, for yeah, the of, beginning. Yeah, yeah, this is an immediate equality, of course, yeah. And uh, maybe it was his main preparation, and he knew that there is some and Fischer move uh, Queen E2, and since Magnus, I believe, already took quite some time. Yeah, something like 20 he, minutes, yeah. It made him to believe. Yeah, so maybe it made him uh, believe that Magnus is playing on his own, and okay, so he tried to fish for this Queen E2, because it really uh, demanded uh, very precise reaction by Black, right? Yeah, I think what Magnus is doing might be the by far the best and by far the most precise reply, yeah. Yeah, so maybe this is what happened, because just to go to this endgame, I mean, which they have now, I think, I mean, it's it's very hard to imagine White winning, and uh, it's possible to imagine White losing. Yeah, this was also the conclusion the conclusion we were coming to, yeah, that this is just seemingly completely safe for black despite being a pawn down and... Would you choose black pieces here? Yes, no, I mean over white pieces, yes. Yeah, over white pieces. Mm. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's not that easy to even figure out how you should proceed from here. And also Fabi is finally... Uh, taking a long yeah, stop. Take, taking a you know a definite definite time in the tank here, trying to figure out how to proceed. So, yeah, the story of Black just being completely problem free. I mean, apart from game three, maybe. Yeah, but in general, Black is just winning the battle in in almost every game in the match. Yeah, yeah but it's like in this game, tic tac toe. Also, <laughs> these zeros they uh, sort of win the opening battle, right? <laughs> Was not this line in the video that was uh, shown from Fabi? <laughs> You've seen the video gate, right, Sasha? No, I... First of all, I mean, I respect uh, that if the guy doesn't want people to watch it, I I'm not going to watch it. Oh. <laughs> That's, uh... Wow. You're not curious. No, I mean, I am, but uh, I mean, since, I mean, I really don't respect paparazzis and uh, people who do this stuff, so, and I respect chess players in general, they are my colleagues, and uh, I don't want to get information like that. Great. I'm sure Magnus have seen it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think for, from Magnus' side it would be, in, in particular, once it became sort of public knowledge and blew up as much as it did blow up. I think, if not Magnus personally, that somebody, somebody on the team would would take the two minutes to to watch the footage. But yeah, honestly, the whole thing is is extremely curious to me. And uh, something I read on Twitter today, uh, it made me like I was perfectly fine with the entire story and I felt it was a destruction and you know something to joke about but it has already claimed you know claimed some victims because apparently 
uh, Ian Rogers is no longer covering the. I, I, if I mis if I misread something and I, I I don't have the Twitter open in front of me, so I apologize if I get some details wrong. But I think Ian Rogers got either fired from or resigned from his column he was writing for the 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 U.S. Chess Life. Because they disagreed, the, the, the editorial uh, policy of the magazine and what he wrote about Game 4 and about the press conference and yeah. about the video game, video gate, they kind of disagreed so drastically on, on what happened there that he felt he could no longer continue working for the magazine. And he was very happy with the magazine up to that point. Scandals. Yeah, so there already have been some fallout. Wow. 76 from... Uh, uh, Didn't know from, that. From uh, from the entire thing, which is, I think, extremely regrettable because um, I don't think it will necessarily have much impact on the match at all, uh, on the match, and uh, uh, it seems like it's just a waste for right uh, for, for for Ian to. Though it's a nice thing for people to talk about. Was it a blunder? Was it on purpose? Nobody knows. Yeah, it's a, it's a confusing story and uh, I mean, it's just regrettable that it seems like it, it is now influencing, you know, real life and not even, you know, the real life of people involved with the match directly. So yeah, that, that, that bit I, I felt was quite sad. So basically, very few people can influence this match. But much can influence a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's a fair description. Yeah, yeah. And we are already seeing that. And uh, yeah, I, it's regrettable that you know this this happened to Ian because Ian is a very nice guy and also I think a very good you know he is a very good journalist and it's it's not ideal. But uh, okay, I think uh, I think we've covered this topic enough and. Uh, we, we should probably move back to what's happening on the board. I still don't know what I would play here with white even. I think we found what seemed like a possible force draw starting with knight c3, but I have a feeling it needs to be checked. We were playing knight c3 here, Sasha. Knight mm -hmm. b4, and I think we were playing rook b1. Can I play king c7? You will give me some check, yeah? Probably, although now I don't think like how how am I following this? I don't have. But I, you. I don't have any follow up here. But you had to C3 have something. Maybe. No, we, for some reason we played knight c two here, and then oh, after okay. bishop b two we were kind of making a draw here with white. But we don't have to play knight c two at all. Yeah, we can take on c seven first, and then maybe the knight will go to d three later. And check bishop d three didn't work. Bishop c three. Doesn't work. Uh, check, check king c6. Check king c6. Bishop c3. Just yeah. knight d3, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And no, I have the, awkwardly placed. Uh, yeah, and um, pieces. equal material now and awkwardly placed pieces. The knight on b5 just just in very serious trouble of being yeah. captured by bishop c4. Yeah, this is not equality. Because honestly, I would like with white by this point. I think I would very much like to force to to find some kind of a force draw and just blitz this out. Because I think the longer the game goes, the more dangerous it becomes for white. It does. But do, do you really think that uh, Fabiana stopped his preparation right here at this moment? Or he just went, as you said, Sasha, he just, uh, he was influenced by Magnus's thoughts and he went for Queenie to Yeah, like I guess it would be my main guess. My yeah, is, but we would never know for sure. I don't think he would uh, admit it at the press conference, so we would never know for sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that what what Alexander says uh, makes a decent amount of sense because the more I look at this position, I, I struggle to, to 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 figure out how how this can be how this can be the best White can play after let's say BC five ninety seven, and he blitzed out this entire sequence. So yeah, maybe the fact that Magnus was, you know, either kind of bluffing or my guess was Magnus was actually remembering yeah, spending the time to make sure he remembers everything correctly. You know, one of those yeah. one of those two things, but I think it may have worked very seriously in his favor. Because it it may have convinced Fabiano that he doesn't really remember very much. 
Yeah, it's funny because uh, after our last game with Magnus in St. Louis, he then uh, said in some interviews that my time usage in the opening can be misleading. <laughs> oh. Uh, meaning that, uh, yeah, I was thinking for a lot, very long time in the opening because it was some line I haven't analyzed for like eight years. Uh, but I was remembering actually the key tactical resource that I had this G4 uh, tactics, mm -hmm. which which is very dangerous for him. And uh, yeah, and he probably played very optimistically because I spent th this much time. And maybe now he's trying to do the same, or I don't know, because it really it feels like made some impression on him because he even said it in interview. So and he, I, I, I didn't even catch that because I, I think uh, neither of you came to our studio in St. Louis. You had all of this written down, including G4? Uh, no, I analyzed it for Black long, long time ago. Oh, okay. That yes. Knight C2 is not good uh, because of G4. Mm, okay. I mean, I had. Uh, then I realized it was exactly this position, but I had a feeling something similar is, I mean, uh, was analyzed by me. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. And what would you play uh, here? Yeah, let's with uh, white pieces. Bishop c3, knight c3. No, but again, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I would not play anything. I just <laughs> would avoid this position. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back to back to the Joyso story. Wow. Uh, so. No, I guess bishop c3, king takes c7, and then something. But maybe d3. Yeah. Or... yeah, maybe g3. Because I would like to play bishop f8 here with black either immediately or after king b6, but e5. I still have to I still have to protect the pawn on e5. So and if f6, then d4, right? Yeah, f6. So you you don't want to play early. There is rook d. I mean, I probably start by playing king b6. I think I was going to play knight d2. I guess. Yeah. Now, do I need rook a3? I mean, I want to play the moves rook a3. Yeah, maybe you just can play king b5. Yeah, that was my. Yeah, I was wondering if I need to include rook a3, rook c1, but I think I don't. I think king b5 immediately is just better. I don't threaten anything yet. Maybe I threaten rook g8 now, actually. Maybe I should play knight g5. I mean, I just don't see what, what I should oh. do. Uh, can okay, you take one? Can you take on h7? I don't think you can take on h7. I, no, but I can play rook a1. Rook a1, yeah. Rook a1, I thought rook a6. Or rook a4 or somewhere. I, and I'm. But maybe knight c4, either here or on the previous move, yeah? Knight c4. No, but I can take and take on, on c4. It's not. Once again, it's kind of risky for white. Yes. It is. Yeah, I remain very unconvinced about this, to be honest, for, for white. And Fabi is taking very, very much time. Yeah, well, we, we don't know exactly how long, but it's, I think it's already been something like 20 minutes here, maybe even longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I was taking a shower before going live and it was this position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so quite, quite some time, yeah. It, I don't know. People are saying close to half an hour already, and there is a suggestion of going bishop c3, king takes c7, knight g5, let's say bishop a2, and something like a fort, or at least create some counterplay. But once again, I like I don't think we are. No, actually, this looks this very logical. Sense. Yeah, this looks logical. Yeah, f6, knight h3, though I guess we'll have to play, yeah? or why not knight up three? Well, yeah. I thought I can take, yeah, but maybe d4, d4 yeah. Yeah, e. this looks right. Yeah, this looks playable. Yeah, this looks playable, and this is the first position I've seen so far, which I don't hate for white. <laughs> but uh, uh, what about if black le uh, lets white to take on e6? Even then it may be, might be slightly... So which move would oh, you no. make here? Bishop f8 or king b6, I don't know. Let's take bishop f8. Then take and b5, doesn't lose e5? Yeah, part? I want knight d4 and then oh, see what happens. Yeah. I don't and know. And f4? 
Four, I guess, bishop c5. Yeah, that's, oh, that's probably nice. strong, yeah. yeah. King f1 and... But then we can even French, take on c4, yeah. yeah. Okay, and if we go g3 for the time being? Yeah, I, I just try to play for some domination, but maybe I don't have enough to do this, yeah? King b6, yeah. knight d2, right? Yeah, if the knight comes out to c4, c4 white shouldn't be doing so poorly. Yeah, it looks if, okay. If, if he tries rook a4, bishop b4, still oh. knight d2, knight c4, right? But oh, actually it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I really, really. But still, white, although I'm not so sure, I, I was going to say white probably still survives this, like some position like this, but I don't like it for white, rook c5, b5. Uh, yeah. I mean, if I will be in time for rook c5, b5, okay. It's... Probably close to lost, actually, for white, yeah? No, I mean, it's a trouble. Um, yeah, but this is okay. This was like on the verge. I mean, it would either work or not work. So, mm -hmm. I mean, at least black doesn't have uh, easy decisions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it feels like starting with knight g5 is how Fabi should approach this. Bishop c3 and knight g5. Yeah. yeah. But he takes a lot of time. What? What is the thinking process of him? <laughs> He's calculating, calculating, or what happens during this half an hour? Uh, actually, for me, it's very easy to understand such thought process. Mm -hmm. Uh, basically, it's very easy to explain. It's just basically, hmm, okay, I, I don't like bishop c3, king c7, I don't like. Uh, shit, um, uh, why have I got this position? Yeah, I was waiting. Okay, let's see further, okay, b, rook, knight c3, uh, knight b4, rook b1, okay, maybe interest. Ah, oh, no, king c7. Uh, shit, Hesitating. why have I got into this position? <laughs> uh, and so on, you know, with circles. Oh, going this is on. amazing. Then, okay, there are maybe some thoughts of something just completely unrelated to chess uh, <laughs> coming to your mind at some point, and so on. This is this is basically how Half my an hour whole goes, yeah. career, career uh, in chess is going. <laughs> I would rather wanted to ask you, Sopiko, like. Uh, what is the thought process of someone who plays uh, really fast, like Anish, for example? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I, probably we have to ask him because I don't know that much about him. But uh, from what I know is that uh, he is um, uh, like you might see ghosts at some point, right? Hesitating. I don't know if he, if some other thoughts are coming into his mind, but he never thought for an hour. I think uh, his uh, record was 40 minutes. 40? 40. 40. Or 40. Uh, no, four on. zero. Yeah, four, four zero, not one four. Ah, okay. Yeah, I mean, and, and, I, and I just wanted to say that, like, I fully endorse what, what Alexander said <laughs> yeah. there. I, that would be my first guess as well. I wanted to hear you say it because it, everything is funnier when you say it. But yeah. yeah, it's basically a combination of like three three line three uh, three move lines which you don't like with this overriding emotion of why am I playing this position? But then you have to force yourself at yeah, some point. Yeah, right? at some point. Yeah, at some you at some point you do, but still like a majority of your uh, of your thinking is devoted to this question why am i here and why is this my position <laughs> and when when does this forcing yourself comes after like 10 minutes 15 minutes or for you sasha half an hour <laughs> yeah this is uh, yeah this is just personal i mean this is just <laughs> different for everyone i mean yeah obviously it's much better to have uh, a low low like limit yeah when you force yourself yeah <laughs> but yeah but as i mentioned uh, in game two with you sasha that you thought uh, one hour and 20 minutes against a nation i uh, told you that he went nuts it really can work sometimes because he was telling me that yeah i don't know what to do i went completely nuts and the very next move i blundered <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was calculating some incredibly long lines. Yeah. He was holding everywhere. 
And then, okay, think for one hour and, and something. Okay, you could say 120, uh, maybe I, I believe you. And then he comes there, okay, makes some grimace like, like this. <laughs> And Typical just immediately Anish. makes an absolutely horrible, yeah. just absolutely completely senseless, horrible. I mean, <laughs> and I'm just immediately winning, but now I have no time whatsoever. <laughs> to I to win. Yeah, I was furious, furious, absolutely furious after that game. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Yeah, but also, I mean, uh, he should just start smoking, then, then there is uh, no problem of your opponent thinking for too long. Oh, no, don't give <laughs> him okay, this yeah. advice. No, no, no. <laughs> I think, I think we, we, I mean, Twitter already provided us with what Anish thinks about this. <laughs> and what he thinks about this is, smoking is bad, okay? <laughs> okay. I think I think there was uh, there is this guy uh, yeah. called, called Dan on Twitter who does all these uh, really, really funny... Uh, uh, mashup videos and uh, <laughs> and images, and he made an image of Anish with a cigarette in his mouth and a tattoo. Yeah, yeah. And I Anish and that. Anish replied to that by saying that smoking is bad, but a sleeve is something to consider. <laughs> I spent too much time on Twitter. I can quote Anish's tweets basically verbatim, which is not good news for me. I think it's like very. She tweets a lot. <laughs> it's it's very very bad news for me, but uh, that, that, that's you know. That's how life is. Okay, bishop c3, king c7 is on the board. Uh, and now... Knight d5, yeah. we're expecting. Yeah, that. now is the, the, the big turning point, because uh, we don't really like anything apart from the move knight g5. And uh, he probably should play that. Yeah, after half an hour, he probably settled on something which is more or less okay for him yeah and uh and we, he played d3 more or less straight away we looked at this we didn't really like it very much i mean white can still probably play knight g5 next move but that gives black uh, you know an important tempo to do something productive and this something productive can be by attacking the we like king b6 or? yeah i mean king b6 yeah. is your the first move you consider here because you know, you bring the king closer to the pawn you want to attack, and you also stop before b5, so you no longer have to calculate and it. And you don't want rook a4, let's say, to attack it directly, and on b5, knight d4? I th I mean, it's playable. It's probably actually very good. But it's may maybe the point is it's not hanging properly. It's maybe I can play knight bg2 here, and if you take e5 on b4, I can right. take yeah. on e5. I'm probably worse even here, actually. <laughs> Like, even this is not that great, right? Yeah. <coughs> but, but maybe we hold this position somehow. We give a check, force the king to some four squares to avoid knight the knight four, coming yeah. to c4 with check. So, like, king b8, we go knight f3, knight d3, and... Yeah, I mean, I still hate it for white. <laughs> this is maybe the best we could have gotten, and I still hate it for white quite badly. <laughs> Yeah, this is Rui Lopez exchanged gone uh, really wrong. Yeah, really, <laughs> yeah, like like badly wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I I actually before uh, he played d3, I was just was going to say that um, in Russia we have a very popular uh, phrase. Both of you know it, but I will say to the viewers. And basically, to English, it's translated something like, "Am I a shivering thing?" Or I have a right, actually. Yeah. Uh, and it's like the moment uh, before 9g5, so it's basically... Yeah. <laughs> and then immediately he played d3, so... <laughs> so uh, he, he answered for himself that he probably is shivering, no. shivering. <laughs> shivering right now, yeah. I mean, it's... No, but maybe we are missing something, maybe it's... An okay move, this I don't know. No, I think once again, uh, we but don't. This knight g5 looked nice, especially yeah. with this f4 idea. Mm -hmm. It looked nice. And uh, I mean, we don't have the machine switched on, and I think Sasha also doesn't have the machine switched on, but the people in, in chat obviously do have machines switched on, and they are suggesting black is already better now. Oh. Which is honestly not a surprise. Yeah, it is not. It really and isn't a surprise. It was pointed out in chat that uh, probably you cannot go knight d2 right away. Let's say if I play h6 or something because of rook a3. And then rook c1. 
Yeah, I don't know. This was a question. <laughs> no, I think this setup is okay. The question is, like, the question is what the first move is here. And I think the two most forcing options are rook a4 and king b6. I still don't like the idea of playing f6 precisely because it allows d4. Mm -hmm. uh, and and people, also it uh, always allows b5 and you don't have yeah, yeah. d4. Yeah. And, and also people in chat are suggesting that maybe it's time to play b5, fix the pawn on b4 and... Uh, and just start grinding and yeah, this looks very sensible and and in particular in this setup if white goes knight g2 I don't think white has a good answer to rook g8 actually mm. Because rook e3 bishop h6 is just sort of immediately resigns more or less So yeah, after, b5. after yeah, b5 I mean once again the question will be can we play knight <coughs> g5 now maybe something improved Maybe it's useful for us to have the pawn on d3 this is my reason for not immediately suggesting b5, because I was, you were not here when we were discussing this position first, and my immediate suggestion even in this position was to play b5 before taking on c7. Mm. But then white has rook c1, and we didn't really like this so very much. But after d3, now that we can play king b6 after rook c1, I think b5 is a very sensible idea, and the question is uh, who, gains, who gains the most after knight g5. So if bishop f8 simply... Now it yeah. seems like I should gain. Black should gain, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually Bishop of is just very strong okay. here. You know, you're just much better. Yeah. And I can less defend the... I... <coughs> Knight H7, we always play Bishop E7, I guess. But even Bishop takes B4, actually, yeah? Nobody really cares about the king's side. It's very dangerous for right now. Yeah, first of all, Bishop E7 might be winning a piece. Because after no, F4, F4, F4... I mean, a 4 F6, I don't... Ah. I still don't understand how the knight... Get, uh, maybe it does get out via rook f1, yeah? But okay, I mean, if, if, if we don't want to calculate, we can take on b4 here and, and just play this position, let's say knight g5, bishop a2 or somewhere. And... Uh, d3 pawn is weak, it will be lost. Yeah, I mean, once again, it kind of depends on whether white can play this and not lose on the spot somehow. Like knight d3, knight b5 check, king, I don't know, b6, rook d1. If this somehow survives, but I think it doesn't. Yeah, bishop b3. And we can take it because of back knight. Yeah, knight. yeah. this is lost, and uh, rook b1, bishop c2 is also lost. So, Losing the piece. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, b b b5 with the idea of just playing bishop f8 against knight, uh, knight g5 seems to be extremely strong right now. Yeah, because, I don't know, for me it was tempting to bring the king to b5, but if you play king b6, yeah, I guess there is an interesting move, bishop d2. Ah, Maybe not. This, is, but, this is clever, this is a clever restructuring, mm -hmm. yeah. Also there is knight d4, and also it's, I don't know what is it, but, I mean there is a resource at least of bishop d2. Yeah. Because if you play king b6, knight bd2, king b5, I think it looks very nice for black. Then I want like rook a3, rook c1, and then knight b4 at some point. Mm -hmm. No, this is dangerous. Yeah, we, we looked uh, at this. This is very dangerous. That looks nice. Yeah, we were looking at knight g5 here, but we, we couldn't really equalize here with white, even after, let's say, the simple bishop a2. Yeah. I mean, maybe white can somehow survive after knight c4, let's say, takes, takes, takes. And rook c1, but I have a feeling probably not. I will just uh, make a touchdown, yeah? King d3, bishop e1, <laughs> knight d4, rook c3 check, king e2, rook no, e3 I, check, I thought, king d1. Wow. Maybe I can king take. King went wild. Ah. <laughs> no, I was hoping... You ruined my... <laughs> How was the touchdown? King d3, bishop e1? Knight d4, yeah. rook c3, king e2, rook e3, <laughs> king d1. <laughs> Yeah, are we actually... And I think it's quite awesome for black, no? Yeah, probably, yeah, bishop h6, bishop h6, bishop h6 yeah. now, yeah, 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 nice, nice, touchdown is good, <laughs> touchdown is very good. No, but we honestly, like, it, it feels like the question now has to be how, just how much better black is. There really is no, there really is no doubt in my mind anymore that black is better. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is really kind of. And it's very easy to play for black. 
Lots of options. Pleasant yeah, options. I don't know. Choose. I don't know if it's easy. See, exactly because of how many very good-looking options there yeah. are here. It would be easier if there was only one good move, because then you could be reasonably certain Magnus will find it. But now you have to choose between at least two very promising continuations. Yeah, and people are remembering yeah. that line you showed with the king ending up on d1. People in chat are already very excited to remember your game against the the late great Vugarga Shimov. Yeah. The the original touchdown okay. in modern chess. D three. Yeah. Yeah. Many options. B five, rook a four, king b six. Yeah, all of them. All of them look quite decent, frankly. Yeah, but b five, I mean, so far looks the nicest for me because of just this resource of knight b d two, rook d. Yeah, rook d eight is simple. You know. Changing the direction of attack is always nice and unexpected. But also, yeah. I think it kind of wins because of the. I mean, maybe you can play something like rook c1, force me to play king b6, and then play king f1 and king e2. But I mean, the position remains kind of horrible after rook d8. Or Two rook bishops. Here, and you, you, no extra you, 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 you do have knight g5 here, yeah. Maybe it's not that horrible. If the pawn was already on h6, I would be. I would think that black is close to winning, but with the 9g5 resource, maybe you can convince yourself you can play like this with white. Yeah, but yeah. it will require quite a calculation by white, and uh, I mean, to just to make sure, not that the line is complicated, but you have to make sure, because otherwise you are in huge trouble if it doesn't work. Yeah, also after knight bg2, let's maybe, maybe there's something even stronger, but I don't see it necessarily rook, okay three rook c1 just yeah right. once again we will have to spend the tempo on something like king b6 and the king starts coming in and we still cannot play bishop f8 properly because the pawn is hanging this is what is the annoying bit here yeah this slightly reminds me of um, uh, the story uh, told in the book of Bareev and Levitov about two matches of Vladimir Kramnik and uh, in uh, I mean uh, against Kasparov in 2000 and uh, Leko in 2004 and uh, there is one bit um, uh, in this famous game in Marshall where Peter was preparing Marshall for uh, Vladimir and it's sort of lost by force. Uh, and then Levitov asks Bareev, because Bareev was also in the team of Kramnik, like, was Vladimir shouting at you uh, after this game? And the answer was no. And it was the worst thing. <laughs> also, of course, also, of course, he did call us jerks. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he, he, there wasn't much shouting involved, but uh, he hasn't spoken a single sentence directly to me until the match was over. Yeah, and I can that hurts. and I can relate to 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 that. I mean, I I'm not saying this as you know, I I fully understand and have no complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it like this. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder who is responsible uh, today for this. And, uh, and it's questions come yeah, into it's, chat. It's, actually, yeah, it's, it's it's very curious that you you went uh, you went to, to tell this story right now because this basically answers the question in chat, which you probably haven't seen. Yeah. But it answers it very directly. No. So yeah, you 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 have some kind of precog abilities <laughs> to to go with everything else. So it's kind of scary. Can I try to start with rook d8 here instead uh, of b5 and all this? Uh, right now, you mean? Yeah. I think the issue is that if white, white plays b5, and, and you have to play knight d4, and you put your rook on the file which is now closed. Yeah. So white will be in time to do something like this, and then his position looks playable. This would not be right. Yeah, so Fabi took, uh, once again, uh, judging by what chat was saying, Fabi took something like 30 plus minutes to play bishop c3. And it's now Magnus' time to take a very, very serious uh, time in the tank to uh, decide on this move. 
Yeah, and uh, I mean, judging by how already uh, seriously he is thinking, it means he is quite, uh, you know, uh, really hoping to win this game. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a clear indication. Yeah, because we saw in in the previous games that when he doesn't have a, a real hope to win, he plays just very fast mm -hmm. uh, in the end games. So yeah, I, I think he he feels that yeah, this is the, the the best the best chance he'd seen in a while, and he's worried about letting it letting it slip. I'm now thinking if it was uh, Fabiano's tie break rapid and blitz preparation because. If you're trying to test Magnus' memory in this line, it's better to do it in uh, short time control, where he can really go wrong. Yes, yes but then, but then it, right. once again, then it's unclear why you do this in a classical game. Yeah, just because he took thought, like Sasha said, that it influenced that he took a lot of. Uh, mm -hmm. Time. And uh, I've been I've been sort of idly trying trying some lines for White here, and I came to the conclusion that maybe this is playable actually because in this position I don't seem to be losing the d3 pawn. But after rook e3, I now realize Black can actually play f6, and there is no defense mm. against bishop h6 and next there is move. No d4. Well. Yeah, and now with the rook on e3, there is never any d3, d4, and on the next move, bishop h6 will be absolutely crushing. A knight on d2 is also a bad piece because it cannot go anywhere. Knight b3 is not possible. Knight c4 is not possible. So this extra pawn does not really matter. In no, this, this is this is close to uh, close to resignable. I think, to my eyes at least. Yeah, bishop. I mean, you actually have to you good. actually have to go back to c1 and hope Ooh. that black has nothing better again, and black will allow you king f1, king e2. But like, it's just horrible. Um, so yeah, b5 looks very logical, but. Uh, other moves are also quite decent. Like rook a4, we were trying knight bg2, but what happens if we play b5 here? Knight g4. And we take. I think we have to probably. Also, we might play knight bg2. Yeah, yeah, I was about to yeah. wait. Wait, wait for one more tempo. Let's go knight bg2 first. And. Probably king b6, I yeah, guess. king b6. Do we have time for like a little window for the king or rook I don't I don't think so. No. I'm trying something like bishop d4, e d4, knight g5 in my head, but I have a feeling it's not going to work. Even once again, even just bishop a2 here. Mm, yeah, maybe we now should play like e5, f4, like, but <laughs> the thing is... There are no queens on the board, and the king is not on g8. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> king is on wrong, <laughs> yeah, they, wrong they, side. <laughs> the but even then, maybe we should play like this. Then we will play knight e4, knight d6. Huh? To create counterplay. Ah, okay, you don't let me. Oh. Okay, I could start with f4. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. e5. Ah, yeah. You, we actually got some, you know, at least our pieces now have some squares to look forward to. Rook a3? Can I win? Yeah, there's this one's oh, hanging with the check here yeah, for now. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. but we are I mean we are getting away getting carried away here a little bit obviously. Because uh Maybe a four bishop h six could be played also. Where? Um, all the way down there, you mean in, in Yeah, kind Where of. was that? Uh F four. Bishop H6. Bishop H6, yeah, fair. But once again, I feel like, you know, yeah. a, a deep analysis of this position is probably not the best use of our time because it really isn't forced. Yeah, but I mean, uh, White is kicking at least. Yeah? yeah, White is still alive here, for sure. White yeah. is still alive, can hope to, to survive, actually. So what is he supposed to do after b5 even? No, but maybe this line actually works for white, yeah, that you showed with knight bd2, rook c1, king f1, king e2, and knight g5. Uh, knight bd2, uh, rook g8, yeah. 
Yeah, Rook you play C1. Rook C1. King B6, King F4. King F1. Yeah. Yeah, this this actually looks like the best of what we've seen, yeah, at least. Maybe it's almost okay. Yeah, maybe like rook d7, knight g5, bishop a2, maybe. Mm -hmm. Rook c2, a1. I thought c2. Rook a7. Ah, like this. Well, I'm trying very hard to keep it alive for one move, and then I will play h6, but. Uh, and it will go back to. Or f6, and we'll go back to e6. Question is, can we, for instance, take on h7 here? But I think probably the answer is no, because I will. Be risky. I will just pick it up next move, yeah? F4. Oops, no, not F3, of course. F4, bishop g8, fe5. Oh, yeah, this is kind of. How bad is this? Like bishop fa? Probably quite bad, actually, because. Yeah, the bishop fa and bishop g8. Yeah, the, the bishop will return, like e5, bishop Pons g8. Run. They are blocked. Well, I mean, at least we, we, you know, there is some hope. With pawns like this, there's always some hope. King, yeah. king e3, king f4, I mean, this is, you know, you will occasionally win this position with white, but <laughs> Sasha, Sasha disagrees. No, but it's a little bit like Berlin, but black has an extra piece. Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but okay, I mean, I, I do currently have three for it. I understand some of them at some point probably will, will fall, but I do have three for the piece. And two of them are reasonably reasonably well advanced. So, and I mean, comparing it to, uh, to to other stuff, and also honestly, like if we make a passive move here and I play f6, I think white is in tremendous amount of trouble. No, no, sure, sure, uh, but it just means he is already in, in trouble. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like just to illustrate, like if we, if we if we make some kind of a quiet move, like I don't know which one to make. Don't even know what to suggest. Like I don't know, a move. And black plays f6, we'll have to go back. Now the pawn is protected, so I can start playing bishop f8, hitting this guy after rook b2. I can go... I mean, there's already rook a3 here, which is almost impossible to meet, actually. And the pawn on b4 seems like we, we already lost it. So there was a reason I was trying all this extremely risky stuff with white, because it felt to me like if we don't, we might just lose in five moves here. And we will not even make him sweat. Maybe b5, bishop d2 anyway. Uh, bishop d oh, okay. Because, I mean, we when we develop this knight to d2, with, especially with the po black pawn on b5, yeah, it's like you develop it to nowhere, I mean, yeah. then it has exactly zero moves. Like, yeah, yeah, very true. And if bishop f8, knight c3 to attack the b pawn and in yeah. king b6, bishop e3? Yeah. Yeah, no, bishop d2, yeah, bishop d2 is a good move. Mm -hmm. Bishop d2. And if knight d4, maybe I can even ignore and play knight c3. Yeah? Well, yeah, you want you want to develop this guy first, and then you will think. Yeah, this looks this looks uh, the best of of the options. So, bishop d2, rook d8, knight c3. Hmm. What if I go very <laughs> ugly looking bishop d7, but I just wanted that knight c3 is not possible. It's but I would no, still no, no. Play. probably still, yeah, still is, play. yeah. Because yeah. there is knight takes b5 here. Yeah. Bishop b5, bishop b4. It's a draw, but obviously white is yeah. extremely happy with the draw yeah. right now. <laughs> So bishop d2, bishop e3, and knight c3. King b6 played. King b6 played, which is, we, we mentioned this move uh, a we long bishop time, d2. yeah, a long time ago. Yes. And yeah. Sasha was suggesting bishop d2 here as well, which is probably quite sensible. Is okay, there... so there is either like knight bg2, bishop g2, or some stuff connected with knight g5. I yeah, guess. I don't think you can wait for a move here. <clears throat> I 
Okay, let's uh, let's have a look at this because I feel like we haven't discussed this. In this position, we did not spend any time actually analyzing this move. So if king b5, knight c3 is very strong, I think white is immediately out of any danger because rook b1 is quite strong. Knight b5 check probably is quite decent, but rook b1 mainly is very good here. Too risky. Yeah, so... Bishop f8, I think bishop b3 check is quite decent here, king b5, and once again I want to go knight c3 check and probably knight d5 check here. Again, I mean, king b3 might be an option, but... Yeah. But already, like, it feels like we're giving white a lot of extra options. There is knight c7 here, there's, like... Also, there's rook b1, rook c1. Uh, but but black goes rook king b2. This is what was worrying me because this is very beautiful. Because if black king takes, takes. on d3, I think knight. Nah, I'm giving the c4, c4. square. I, I thought knight e1 check was the threat which cannot mm -hmm. be parried, but it's not made. Okay, so. But still, like, like something should be here. I don't think this position is bad for black. I mean, for white. Yes, yeah. but I don't see actually. Ninety-five king b three. Knight c seven, I guess rook a two. Mm hmm Yeah. And then the b pawn runs because we we might actually have to give up a a decent amount of stuff on the king side, but the b pawn probably just becomes a queen. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I would be quite unhappy to exchange it for a bishop or. A yeah, yeah, you you want the rook for it in a position like this. I don't know how how optim like how optimistic we are here, but no, maybe we should start with bishop before, yeah, to win the tempo. Hmm. No? I was going to e7 anyway to c c control the knight, so I. Uh. But yeah, it makes sense because it more or less forces white to play, or maybe not. Maybe we can play rook c1 here. Can I play rook c2? Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, it's once again, it's clear that Black is playing for a win here. Mm -hmm. Just uh, you know, the, the question is just how much better he is. No, but that would be cool if it would actually happen in the game. Yeah. To King go run. to yeah. Is there anything else apart from Bishop D two here that we like even remotely? No, Knight G five is a, a, always a try. Yeah. But we were... What were we doing against it? I think we were playing bishop a2 simply. Okay, f4. Hmm. Yeah. And Although I, I don't know, bishop f6. Six, 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 uh... I mean, uh, there's... Bishop yeah, there's definitely bishop h6. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's necessarily all that great because like after knight bg2 i don't know what the threat is I just e4 e4 i will go back to f3 i'm not sure i'm unhappy about this at all okay four king b5 maybe yeah. king b5, king b5 yeah. just keep it keep it cool don't commit to anything yet okay but it is now at least it's not so clear yeah it's hard to say it feels like black is better everywhere, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's uh, he doesn't have full control. I mean, not, yeah, not, not full control yet, for sure. So it's either, you know, the current thinking is it's either bishop d2 or knight g5. We don't really like anything else. It's moved 20 as well, so... This is a difficult endgame to play. We might have a, a reasonably interesting time travel potentially today, yeah? With both of them at around both of them, yeah. Both of them at around fifty minutes for twenty moves here where you know, decisions are not that easy. Black doesn't want to slip the advantage and uh, white wants to keep everything under control. No, I think white now I probably cannot keep everything under control. Uh, it's now uh, actually he should try to muddy the waters uh, mm -hmm. to try to find some fighting resources, some resources for some counterplay and so on. Because I, I don't think defending passively would do anything good for it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's that's my feeling as well. You you badly need to find some counterplay more or less immediately. I mean, the way to try and hold this passively would be something like knight bg2, king b5. Uh, let's say I just had something in my head and it disappeared. It's a very normal thing these days. Like king f1, <laughs> rook a3, rook c1. Some kind of a position like this. and pretend that nothing bad is happening now and maybe we can bring the king over to e2 and then I, I, I still don't know what my next move is to be honest but maybe I can find a move eventually maybe my move is not b1 way, yeah just in this bishop d2 king b5 yeah crazy line but what actually was an idea if white plays rook b1 check instead of knight d5 uh, Can't we take? Ah, it was a knight bishop f8. Ah, of course. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. We we started with uh, we started with uh, bishop f8. Yeah. Sorry. So bishop f8. Okay. And what actually goes on here? If if knight c3 immediately. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. But if I take. If I take. Ninety-five. Okay. I was going to check. Yeah. Takes. Take d5. Takes. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. There is rook b1 yeah, check. It's, it's actually not stupid at all, rook b1 check here. B1. I think it's probably stronger than knight takes d2. Because knight takes d2, I can, for instance, just go knight d4. This, I think, is very dangerous for white because you, you get positions like this, which are objectively, I guess, close to lost. Or you can take on e5 and go knight f1 and also probably build close to lost yeah, after king c5. And the b-pawn just runs. So you go rook b1 check here. The threat is d takes c6, which means you have to go knight b4. And now knight takes d2. Knight is hanging. And after king, king c5. c5. Ha, ah, but there will be first rank issues. Yeah, right? knight e4, king d5, right? But maybe we can play some... Yeah, knight e4, king d5 is what I missed originally. Okay. But maybe we can make a draw here. Ah, no, there's mate anyway. <laughs> I was about to say this is maybe a draw, but it's not really a draw at all. Yeah. Nice lines. Yeah, problems, uh, problems for white for sure, even here. Yeah, but maybe okay after the king c5. Yeah, I feel it's well, yeah, a little let's, bit critical. Let's discuss this. So bishop d2, bishop f8, knight c3. We take on before with the bishop. Knight d5, bishop d5, e d5, bishop takes d2. Rook b1 check. Knight b4, knight d2, king c5. There is d6. Yeah. Yeah, there is d6, there is f4, I mean, there are lots of moves. Yeah, no, this is, this looks close to a draw. I'm not sure if it is a draw, but this looks close to a draw. Uh, although maybe not, I don't, because I formed just like take d3. Maybe just g3. Yeah, maybe just. Just make some kind of a sensible move, make a loft for the king and not lose any material because knight e4 check is a huge threat yeah and i have a feeling yes. black has to take yeah rook b7 and we go like check maybe just knight f1 is a draw here i mean i understand it's so ugly, ugly to play like this but maybe we can just hold this position why not king yeah g2? but black had g3 f5 no because king g2 rook a2 oh. i'm very worried mm -hmm. Knight e4, king d4. Knight e4, yeah. king d5. Even. And yeah. the, it's very difficult to keep this knight in place yeah. and it might just be losing for white. But knight f1 might be playable. g3, what did you want to suggest? f5? Yeah. F, yeah, f5 is important. Yeah, just taking away this square and continuing to play quietly. And if we play d6. d6, b5. Whoa. d7, rook d8. Yeah, full. Full on control mode, yeah? <laughs> Cutting out every single square. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> knight is. Uh... Oh, actually, there is no rook c1, so maybe I can even play knight take d3. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even. You maybe have even some this. rook b1, rook b3, maybe, yeah? Then. Ah, yeah. With the idea of rook c3, rook c8, yeah. And even then, black has king d6, then rook a1 check, <laughs> and d7. Yeah. So, once again, you, I mean, for, for the viewers, we are currently at move 32 in this variation and there's 20 made on the board. So you should uh, take this with a with a grain of salt. Bishop d2 played by Fabi though. Yeah, so. Bishop d2 we have. 
on the board. And I mean, it's not unexpected that he is finding good decisions here. He is, I think, a very tenacious. And he's forced to. Tenacious defender. <laughs> and also, as Sopiko is saying, yeah, he is kind of forced into a corner here. I'm sure he realizes this has not gone according to plan, but he doesn't want to just roll over. Oh, yeah. Sorry, roll over and die. Yeah, but I think every top player is a very tenacious defender. So, yeah, that was shots Shots definitely fired, because I think this means I'm not a top player. Which I think is fair, but... Uh, uh, That's why you're tenacious if you, when you want. You just not always want. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah, that's like I, I accept that as, as a character in a beloved TV show would say. <laughs> I accept that. Okay, Bishop F8 we are expecting, and let's see how. Yeah, that was that was one critical line, and another one line would be. Take for this, yeah. Does Rook D8 here make any sense? It's just hard to tell. There is like knight c3, then knight f4, check knight c5. Yeah. Very yeah, this, active knight. Yeah, this this suddenly. might this this might be very very important. Because most importantly, b7 is hanging. Everything else I could live with, but the fact that the b7 is hanging, and I have to take on d3 because knight b4 or b1 is just bad. Okay, so this probably. I mean, I. If I have to go back, it's probably not great. Yeah, knight c5, I still have to waste the tempo to go with the rook somewhere. Yeah, this is not great. Okay. Is there anything else apart from bishop f8 then? It's most critical, definitely. Yeah, it feels like absolutely the most critical move in the position right now. Because if you allow knight c3, not even bishop b3 check, but knight c3 first followed by bishop b3, I think white will be more or less out of danger. Uh, bishop f8, there is also some b5. Oh. Uh, Take. Takes. Um, check. Knight c3. And now it's funny, after king c5, bishop e3, king b4, we actually transpose to another line <laughs> yeah. that we yeah. discussed earlier. Yeah, another but, one of those. But he can uh, potential, force it. Potential touchdowns, yeah. Yeah, and maybe bishop d2 here. I mean, or in another line, yeah, bishop d2. King b3. Yeah, I was going to suggest the rook b1 and just take b7 and hope there is nothing. But I don't think after bishop e1. Yeah. I and don't I don't think your hopes will be realized here. I think oh, you're yeah, this wins. Yes. I mean after king f1 I still don't right? see how I win, but No. Uh what is this if I get two pieces for yeah, the yeah, rook? I can, yeah, I can uh, no, but okay, I can Sobiko is just correct, right? I can Ah, I can go so. for this. Or I... bishop h3 is ah. there. There's king e2. Ah, king e2 yeah. yeah, I thought I was giving mate, but there's the, the c2 square, yeah. so I don't I don't actually give mate here. And there might be something stronger. I was looking at bishop h6 here with the idea of just landing it on d2 and collecting everything. Mm -hmm. It might work, for all I know. It's not stupid, but I mean, might work, might not work. I can't really decide. But I think the fact that uh, knight f3 and rook takes e1 exists is good enough. Yeah, but still we might be blundering something. Of course, we'll yeah. Just say to the viewers that it's not the position you can be really sure, completely sure about without yeah. an engine. Because once you run with your king to b3, I mean, still there are four pieces for each side on the board. It's yeah. not like a complete endgame, you know. And so... it's worse for the players because we can take back the moves, but they cannot. Yeah, uh, once again, the, Pressure on them. Yeah, the, the, the price of the move is quite steep here, so uh, if Magnus was hoping to win this endgame without really having to calculate very much, he will be very disappointed because 
Yeah, he he has to, but I don't think he minds. That. No, it's not that he minds, but uh, <laughs> it will now become very sharp and very very concrete. It no longer really is an endgame yeah. where you you operate in like in plans and. And if he doesn't manage to get something out of this game, then it will be psychologically very difficult for him, I guess. Already twice, second time, because I mean the first game he had very, very big advantage and he couldn't convert it. Then um, it is hard to yeah. continue. <clears throat> yeah, but he's a fighter, you know. He's... He takes game by game. No, I mean, of course he has emotions, but he is a fighter. I mean, he, he, maybe he will be in a bad mood after, after that and stuff like that. But he is not gonna stop fighting or just yeah, that's... start throwing games. It's not gonna happen. That, that's true. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, yeah, he will be, you know. Maybe he will start losing some cool, but not more than that. Yeah, I'm still. I'm. I'm wondering if maybe B5 was stronger than King B6 because, you know, if you are obliged to start all these king runs here, then you have to calculate. You, but I mean, more importantly, there is this feeling that you kind of lost control. You you had a position where you were firmly in control, and you really aren't. Because one another thing I wanted to discuss here, like uh, uh, Knight C3, we were taking with uh, the bishop. But apart from knight d5 check, which we discussed, there's also first rook b1. And now we create a threat of knight d5, which is very strong. If king c7, there is, for instance, here, knight d5, bishop d5, e d5 is very strong. Okay, maybe white is not winning, but white doesn't risk anything at all in this position, like bishop c3. It's probably actually a draw because of how... No, bishop c3 maybe not a draw because there's rook c1 in this position. But if I go to some better square, like bishop somewhere... No, maybe not a draw at all, because then the e5 <laughs> pawn will be hanging. And my point was, I thought originally that king c5 is quite good here. But then we give this check, we give this check, Suddenly and, and in this checks. position we can just play, let's say, d3, d4. d5 is a threat, yeah, so d5 we d5 is all, it. although maybe rook a5. Once or bishop a2 is also an option. Bishop a2, I thought, is not really that critical for me because I thought I can just choose a square like what, rook d1 or rook c1, maybe. Mm. Even. But once again, rook a5 is something I missed. Yeah, yeah, and then rook a5. Yeah. yeah. And I'm obviously, I'm doing this, like I'm trying to, to analyze this blindfold and I'm clearly blundering things on every move. But, uh, which applies to, to, to all of us here. Yeah, white actually ver very much needs this window for the king because instead of d4, knight e5 yeah. would not work. Knight yeah, e5 that's... and rook yeah. b4, rook a1 check. So he's really missing this little window. But if I cannot waste tempo for that. No, but also, this brings a question. Can I just play, can I just play h3 here? Yeah, that, that's... Because now after rook a5, I will have this tactic. Which means that maybe black has to spend a tempo on something like f6, and I want to play d4 now. Has anything changed after rook a5? Am I still losing after rook a5, though? This is kind of unfortunate. I mean, f6 is also quite a big move for black. I mean, it really cements his position. Yeah, here. yeah. We, uh, finding a, finding a tempo to play f7, f6 is ex in, extremely important for black here. Stops knight g5 counterplay, yeah. controls this pawn, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Here we will just, you know, be drowning, yeah, in these uh, variations. Drowning. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it's very likely. I mean, there is, uh, just I wanted to point out, maybe there is a funny idea to meet bishop f8 with bishop c3. But... <laughs> <laughs> and if f6, d4? No, but I think, yeah. I, I think uh -huh. we discussed something like this. No, I think this might... Yeah, similar, but uh, not in this position. Yeah, because here you have knight c4 check. I yeah. have a check, yeah, for, first of all. Might still be worse for white. Might be too yeah, but I mean, it's quite a serious option. Yeah. To simplify yeah, the mean, position. If, if that's all what black got, I mean... I'm not sure this is lethal, you know, I... I, I Maybe not, yeah. This actually is quite unpleasant for white because there is no good square. I mean, knight b2, rook a2 is extremely awkward. 
Night City, no, no. Ah, <laughs> nice. Ah, <laughs> Night City 4. Yeah, as mentioned. Nice. We are... Finally, there is some use of those uh, stupid nights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mostly they are just standing, standing, and finally. Yeah. yeah, okay. So after after Night B2, I will play King D4 first. Let's go for some more touchdowns. I, I, I will still insist this is much better for black. If knight c3 is not there. In particular, I like this Oh! <laughs> With b5 yeah. coming, and, if and, knight c4. And now, and now we're really collecting. Like knight c4, I want to take... I like to, as they say about the advantage of two bishops, the advantage of two bishops is that at <laughs> some point you can trade one of them. Yeah. Uh, with great effect. So here I will, I will do this, yeah. No, this is fun to discuss, but I think bishop e3 check is probably, or knight c3 is probably more critical here. Maybe. But, even... but that was also very forcing, so, okay, so at least now we know bishop c3, because maybe there is not that big of a choice for black. Yeah. Uh, f6, d4 actually looks okay, and he played rook, rook d8. d8. He played rook yeah. d8, but we found something against this, right? Mm. Oh, you were, you, you, you were playing knight c3. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you were playing knight c3 here, and we knight thought this was quite okay. Yeah. So let's see what was our. Maybe now side. bishop f8. No, but then bishop b3, check and b5. Oh, king b5, I don't have. Yeah, yeah, it's very important that we block the king from getting to b5 in that line. So. Uh, I mean, knight b4 looks. No, like before rook b1, you, you probably lose material here. Or at least come close yeah. to losing material, like bishop f8 and I have a choice. Yeah, there is a, yeah, now white has a huge choice. You can take e5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. knight e5. You at, will have at, all sorts of check. Yeah, you mm -hmm. could, mm. At the very least we have this option and probably there's maybe even something stronger. Yeah. No, this isn't great. Like knight d5 check is quite sensible as well. Uh, no, knight b5 doesn't look right. Sorry, knight, so, knight takes b4 doesn't look right. So, okay, and it's then very hard to avoid taking on d3, I guess. There's maybe... No, knight d4. <coughs> but we can force you to take with the pawn and then go knight a4, knight c5. Yeah, yeah, like, it feels like you're playing to lose, not playing to win. And the same game with b... No, still bishop c8. No, it's quite yeah. difficult. It's not, it's not horrible, but it doesn't feel like we've achieved very much, right? It's just like white solved most of his issues. No, I mean, my next move B6? is b6, yeah, then the bishop b6. No, I, I, mean, I understand, I understand. But once again, it's just, it's... Uh, it's just very uh, superficial, I mean, uh, to play like that. I mean, it's so unnatural to play like that. Mm -hmm. like, it's, I mean, if he will play like that and it will prove to be strong than just my head's off and <laughs> yeah but yeah it doesn't doesn't feel like this should be winning so he takes on d3 probably we go knight a4 check king b5 actually we're not forced to go king b5 but i don't think it matters a great deal king c7 i mean you can go king c7 but why are you so much happier about this b7 point is protected yeah b7 is protected where does the rook go a3 a3 Probably a3. Yeah, but now it okay, should be uh, huge drawers, mm -hmm. drawing chances. Yeah. This no longer looks horrible at all. And we can Although, even... Although, I mean, still, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's still unpleasant, but... Let's go for... Knight d4. You, you will take the pawn? Yeah, I, I won this. I won this guy. Yeah. No, exactly. I'm also controlling the bishop yeah. on g7, actually. And, okay, I'm... I understand my pieces are kind of weird, but I, I am a pawn up now with white and, you know, eventually probably something will be created on the king's side. You had lots of similar structures in anti marshals yeah? Like... I actually try to avoid them at all costs. I almost never allow them. Uh. I really, really hate those bishop 6 bishop 6 fe6 lines and I, like my entire career of anti marshals and 6d3s was, you know, I, I always tried very hard to play for anything else they don't always let me but whenever I have a choice and yeah and king b5 knight c5 
White, I think, will be just taking on b7, not on e6 here. With the king so active, I think. And I mean, with b7, I will take uh, on b7, I will take with the tempo unless you go to a3. And if you go to a3, then I will have some knight d6 check option. Yeah. So pff, it looks quite okay. I don't know. Maybe knight d4 now. But it's. But yeah, once again, why is this why is this black playing for a win? But I'm just I ah, now there is even knight d6 check and king c6 b5 check. Nice. Haha, <laughs> bishop b4. Yeah, very nice. So no, it just doesn't doesn't feel very threatening. Or you could play knight c5 in this position and just continue asking the question. I guess black plays something like bishop c4. But it's not very difficult to calculate this knight c3, knight a4. Yeah, I think you just need to see the move exist. Yeah. But I think it's like white has so few moves in general that not seeing you have knight c3 as an option is very difficult. Also, the whole idea of bishop d2 was to prepare knight, knight c3. Knight c3, yeah. So yeah. It's just very hard to miss. I mean, okay, maybe we are missing something or... Or he's just making sure. Uh, yeah, I think making maybe sure. Maybe he is... cannot believe his luck, you know. <laughs> sometimes. Uh, or he's too cautious. Is he too cautious again? Doesn't want uh, to have. Actually, it seems that he's not co cautious enough. <laughs> yeah, I think. That's... I mean, with each uh, with each his white game, I start to appreciate more and more Karakin's uh, match strategy. Mm -hmm. Just not trying to win a single game. <laughs> and um, he managed to break him first. Yeah, yeah. Um, Interesting, I think. Yeah, it's it's curious. It's curious soon. why why I mean there is bishop e3 check if you, you like this probably also is a draw, actually. Knight c3, king b4, and knight d5 check. Maybe this is why the move hasn't been played yet. Mm. Because we take, take, you probably have to take, I go rook b1 check, and I go rook takes b7, and I probably shouldn't lose this. Although, like, there's e5, e4. But maybe here. he's hoping for this, white. Or not. Who, who is hoping for what? <laughs> No, no I, I, I black. Okay. Sorry, I, I meant that maybe he he. W this was the line uh, which uh, Magnus calculated, and maybe he missed this knight c3 knight a4 check. I mean, even here there is rook c7 in this position. Oh yeah. Oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, rook c7 is just an immediate draw, I guess. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe no, but maybe we were missing something. Is this bishop of fate? Because, yeah, we don't use engines, and uh, you just cannot be 100% sure without them. Yeah, ch chat, so... chat wasn't screaming at us that we were missing something, which is normally what happens if, <laughs> if it's a really big blunder, chat, yeah. chat does tell you, which okay. makes me think that it wasn't a horrible move, but I'm sure we were missing something. Yeah. No, I mean, we, are, we were definitely missing some uh, lots of uh, little details. I mean, uh, the question is if we are missing something that changes our evaluation. Yeah, I don't know. And it's 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 kind of gone now. So we, we don't really have any reason to go back in, in too much detail. OK, so can you show me again this line you, you said is an, uh, uh, an easier draw? So rook d8, you, you give a check. Yeah? I, don't, I don't know about easier. I'm just saying. I'm trying to figure out why knight c3 is not on the board, and this is the only conclusion I came to. Bishop b3, maybe there is king c7, but then one again we can once again we can play b5, and this doesn't look horrible for white. So yeah, yeah I mean there is some knight b4, but yeah. Rook c1 check. I was trying to calculate this. Rook c1 check. You have to go to some weird squares. I will go to b8, I guess. I, I thought bishop b6, but then maybe you can play rook c8. Maybe you can like back up like this and d3 is still extremely weak and knight d3 would not work i honestly just missed it so <laughs> uh i can't tell you <laughs> so there is you have to play bishop now it's very interesting you have to play bishop c7 check yeah 
So mm. now if king a7, then rook c3, rook c3 and rook I think white wins yeah. because uh, he gives it. No, I mean king a7, rook c3. Yeah, yeah I know, but, but here. King c8 also, rook, but show to the viewers. I mean, it's oh, yeah, yeah, so okay. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> king c7, rook, rook c3, yeah, we're giving mate. So king c8, rook c3, and here I was planning to go knight f4, but then I realized bishop takes c5 is kind but of. But knight c5, no? Because rook d1 is. Uh... No, but bishop takes d8 is a threat. Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. And I was also planning no. to make an illegal move no. in this position. <laughs> yeah. I was so. planning. I was planning to go knight f4 into check, but the yeah. computer would not let me because actually oh, my. No, no. This computer would let. Me. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently not. You know, I've I've been trying for a while now, and it doesn't work. So, all very regrettable. Uh, okay. So. Yeah, so, so okay, king b king no, b5, king b5, check, check. I don't think you can run okay, forward. Okay, so now, now, now we can run to a3, for example. I don't know. Yeah, you play the same, unfortunately. But now you will not have rook c7, yeah? If I... Ah, so you want to you wanna go for the same line now, yeah? Yeah, but then you will have knight d2. Knight d2, yeah, knight d2 knights. Or rook yeah. takes f7 first, even. Yeah. Okay, so let me think a little bit sure. earlier. So knight d5, yeah? But could he go okay, knight d2? Okay, but it's d2? not so easy to find something. Mm? Uh, could he go knight d2 um, in that line when king was on e3? Not on e not to take on b7. And go knight oh, d2. Hang on a second, sorry. Knight, uh, knight d2. Uh, but there's, five, there's b5, yeah. yeah. B5 solves. Okay. Yeah. Solves most of those problems, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so this position. Yeah. Yes. It feels reasonably, surprisingly, it feels reasonably forced. So I'm beginning to understand why Fabi, um, Fabi might be interested in this, just to make sure the game is over. Okay, so King A3. No. I just want to have one last try, but. Um, I just cannot find an option. Okay, maybe, okay. Oh, now sort of touchdown light. King d3, <laughs> rook d1 check, king c2, and just take d3. Just to undermine this e4 pawn. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But, no, prob yeah, but g5? No, no, g5. probably a draw of the g5 anyway, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I because mean, you you're not threatening mate, yeah. You know, if, if maybe white is better. Mm -hmm. Because your king is in the way of your back rank threats. Yeah. Yeah. Touchdown light. Touchdown light did not work. Yeah, I don't see. So maybe bishop e three is actually a like it's a way to make what appears to be a more or less forest draw, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, but white just is, is not even making it from the weak side. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's just a. So far, we did not find a single line in which black was even pressing. Yeah, so. Seems like a very decent decision. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. I will take a very short break. Sure. And be back. Yeah. Sure. So, what do you think? We have suggestion of uh, bishop e3, king b5, bishop c5, b6, knight c3. <laughs> Again? <laughs> bishop e7, uh, bishop e3, king b5, mm -hmm. bishop c5, Whoa. <laughs> somehow b6, I don't know why, and yeah. knight c3. <laughs> yeah, it's very beautiful, but obviously yeah. after bishop c5 there is knight takes yeah. before, so that's that's just for like for for the, the, the aesthetic yeah. beauty of this position, but it's not going to happen. And people are also saying there is rook d1 here, which might hold. Wow. With which is a move which we, we, we completely... Bishop uh, e3 ideas. But I, I think it's pity for Magnus. I mean, uh, I, I like to weigh more bishop f8 and all this uh, no, but the, complications. The, sure. Uh, but once again, it's not like Magnus blitzed king b6 out here. No. It was quite obvious that he was very, very seriously considering uh, his options and he knew he might be quite significantly better here. And he took, by his standards, a very, very long break here, something around 20 minutes. We don't have the exact timings on our screen yeah. right now, but I'm guessing close to 20 minutes to play King B6 here, 
which once again, by, by Magnus's standards, is like Sasha taking an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Clo close to Sasha taking an hour, I would, I would yeah. say. Magnus generally uh, sees things very fast and very cleanly and doesn't like taking too much time on a single move. And bishop e3, uh, if, if we don't like keeping, keeping in touch with what's happening on the board, bishop e3 is Fabi's choice. And as we were saying, uh, it does appear to be a very decent practical decision because... Yeah. Uh, we, knight c3 seemed easier. Knight c3 <laughs> seemed perfectly fine, but knight c3 allowed some play. Let's put yeah. it like this. You could you could still get very double-edged positions after mm -hmm. knight c3. And after bishop e3, so far I think we completely failed to find anything for black that looked double-edged or looked like it was giving black any kind of winning chances. You know, if you really want to play for three results here, you can maybe go king c7, b5, and not knight b4 that we were trying in, on air. Maybe just play knight g4 here. But this really is extremely double-edged, like takes, takes, knight g2, king b6, and let's say rook b1 here. And Two bishops are still. Two yeah, bishops, so two bishops but an extra pawn is Yeah, it is, it is an extra pawn. Although, I mean, I actually quite like this for black, like rook c8 with the ideas of rook c5 or rook c3. But if black manages to get that pawn back, then two bishops are better, way better than uh, yeah, of two course, knights. yeah. If if the pawn b five, if the pawn b five falls, black will have a very significant advantage. So, uh, king c seven with the idea of playing b five knight g four might be the way uh, to preserve life in the position. Let's put it like this: to to continue playing uh, reasonably sharply. But also something like knight c three is quite interesting here, because if black takes. And takes on d3. Takes on d3. I think rook d1 rook is quite strong here. Rook c1. Sorry, rook c1. Yeah, you mm -hmm. for you 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 force black to go somewhere with this king. That's it. Uh, probably b8. b8, and then we can start uh, looking at jumps, or we can maybe even spend the tempo on something like king g2 to yeah. make sure bishop h3 is not a problem later in the game. And now this setup is actually yeah arrows. Hello. <laughs> uh, this setup is actually quite stable and quite sturdy for white. And knight a4, knight c5, and knight a4, knight b6 ideas are King might be weak. Black yeah, king and the king, king on b8, b8 is now uh, yeah far out of far out of the game and not really doing very much. Well, interesting how the game will follow. Yeah. But definitely, they gave us something very excited to talk about. Yeah, this was a fun game, but once again, it feels like. Um, Magnus will have, although it's very possible that this position is not as bad as we were trying to make it look, look like, like during it. during the live show, and maybe this b5 move, which we liked quite a bit, is not nearly as strong as we thought. But it was a very very serious option, and I will, uh, you know, sort of looking forward to later today when I will have to do a, a recap. The recap. Yeah, the recap of this game. I think this is probably. Uh, you know, arguably the most important turning point in the game after Fabiano allowed all this. Because obviously, as Sasha said, here there is no way white, there is no way white can be remotely worse here. Yeah, this music is <laughs> unexpected. Yeah. Uh, uh, we should probably... <laughs> yeah. That's how the game looked like. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello again. And yeah, hello. Uh, so bishop e3 finally. Happened. Yeah, bishop yeah. e3. Uh, uh, and yeah, it looks like I was I was arguing that maybe black can play king c7, b5, knight d4 if he wanted to continue fighting for you know all three results. But this is already taking potentially a significant risk. Yeah, I mean. For instance, like, rook c1 check might be a clever move here. Oh, definitely. To force black to go to... Move. Yeah, like, enough the king b6, now I will play knight c3. And if rook c8, I have these knight d5 check tactics. I don't know if immediately or take on d4 first and... Yeah. Like, something like this. You cannot take because c8 is hanging, you have to take here, I go rook b1 check. Yeah, who knows what this is. M might just be a draw with the... <laughs> with, with this Perpetual. repetition, as 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 usual in chess, there's yeah. always there's always a, an unexpected repetition just yeah. around the corner. But. King cannot go anywhere else because King A4 just not Knight B6. Yeah. King and seven. so okay. King uh, uh, 
And what? it's strange that he's thinking, it's like Magnus makes a move, and then every time Fabiano answers, Magnus again starts to think for quite some time. So it means, I don't know, maybe he just cannot calculate uh, lines with, pre with some required precision and confidence. Yeah, it's uh, the the, the because, timings is the timings are a bit confusing because because we, usually people uh, uh, make moves in some series, you know, you yeah. think for fifteen minutes, then you make two three moves uh, quite fast. Th this is why, for example, it's always very hard to play uh, against somebody you uh, which moves you cannot uh, guess. Yeah predict uh, yeah. and then you, you just end up in time trouble because you just okay you were thinking about something then he makes another move then you think about some new stuff and again, again he surprises you and so on and so on but here like it's pretty forced uh, the lines yeah right? I don't know maybe he missed bishop d2 so because he was thinking for uh, about uh, to rook d8 for a long time mm -hmm. And now again, bishop e3. Like maybe he was expecting this knight c3, knight a4. I don't know. Probably, yeah. Probably. Hesitating. Yeah, for sure. And uh, king b5 played. And now I expect this whole sequence to play out. Okay, so what's the? I think it's time to ask the question. What's the cleanest way to make sure you're not worse here with black? No, I guess you would take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take. Uh, king c3 and knight d8. Ah, yeah, knight d8 is mm -hmm. good. And Not rook c7, seven. check king d3. But white is now suddenly much more active than black, and yeah, like maybe. We did I mean, lose guess... a pawn. Yeah, but. Just... Here there is bishop h6, but I guess knight g5 is not even necessarily required. There's also. Yeah, I don't know. King of one maybe to create. Yeah, very. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is quite. Pretty. This is quite nice. Not gonna happen though. Like king of one, black probably plays something like h6 to stop all those jumps. But we can play like g4, h4, h5 or something. All of our pieces are quite good. The bishop on g7 is horrendous. Yeah, and like... the knight d5 is on the board. Knight c3, knight d5. Yeah, not not unexpected. Take. Yeah, we have this, and Fabio will take because obviously Rook B1, Bishop B3 would be a bit of a mistake. <laughs> so Ed5, I don't think Knight can go anywhere. Yeah, I don't think Knight. Knight. Uh, I mean, there is Knight D4, followed by King C3, but he, he has already taken on D5. I mean, that was always extremely unlikely to happen. And yeah, Rook B1 played. I think we'll wait for this uh, fourth sequence to play out and then take a short technical break because we did not really have any kind of a break uh, since the start of the show. So we'll wait because I think they will make uh, a couple more moves very quickly and then there will be uh, a dip. I don't know about a dip, uh, a dip pause, but at least, you know, we will have a position to discuss, which probably will be close to equality and it will be a decent, a decent moment to take a short technical break yeah I guess it's going to be this position we just looked at yeah it just very likely yeah I don't I don't I mean there are some lines with e4 which you could try but I don't think you're just better with black like I don't know king a4 rook b7 a4 yeah rook f7 or rook f7 or knight d2 even just... yeah knight, knight d2 we take with the pawn rook f7 we go I don't know bishop c3 and we pretend we're better but I don't think we are this is the issue yeah I <laughs> like it's very difficult to believe black is actually better. Yeah, there is no extra pawn. So. Yeah, and the thing is, after after rook takes h7, even if black does end up winning a piece for this professor on d3, it's still an absolutely trivial draw. So, you're taking some risks. Yeah, and whether black will keep a, a bishop or a knight, it will be a draw. Yeah, so, so like you, you you're actually taking some risks, maybe not large risks, but some risks, and your your payoff is extremely unclear here because I'm not sure how you even win this position. There's something incredibly strange has to happen for Black to have significant winning chances here. Yeah, Fabi gave check. 
Yeah, the king, the king still hasn't moved anywhere. So perhaps you know my expectation of seeing more moves immediately is not true. <laughs> and we can take a break here, and we'll be back in like five to ten minutes uh, with probably the conclusion of this game. So stay, Jesus. yeah, stay tuned and thank you for watching.
We're back with new position. Yeah, we're back with the new old position, <laughs> exactly the position we expected. And uh, Fabi is uh, choosing a square for the rook. I think in general, uh, our evaluation was this should be very holdable for white, and we we, we stick to that, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, rook c7 played. Magnus will take. I quite like this king f1 move actually because it boxes in the king on d3. It makes it very difficult. Invite c4, to... right? <laughs> yeah, and also invite c4, knight e1, mate. But even sort of jokes aside. No, but I mean, also it prepares some sort of uh, net, um, a mating net. If then white plays g4, mm -hmm. black at some point plays king e4, and now we have king e2. Exactly, that was exactly so my point. And. Uh, even more so, actually, after king f1, if we play, let's say, h6, g4, already there is a threat of knight e1 check, rook king e4, rook c4, and we win the exchange. So this is actually quite serious. Though it might be a tiny bit uh, weird for amateur players to understand because, okay, black has extra pawn, uh, sort of active king, but... Uh, but the bishop on g7 is pretty bad. Yeah, I think... The, the knight mm -hmm. is also in the back rank and uh, white pieces are very active. Mm -hmm. No, I think uh, white, white might not just be worse at all after king f1. I think the chat was also suggesting that bishop g5 might be an immediate draw, which I, I can believe, but I don't think white needs an immediate draw here. And also, why would you want to calculate something like this, even if there is a solution here? Yeah. Why would you want to calculate this with white? I, I really don't understand. I quite like king f1 here. Uh, Fabi has 20 minutes against 30 for Magnus for the remaining 12 moves, but the position I think is simple enough that we should not have any... King uh, f1 is pretty n uh, natural and human, because then we won't have uh, also problems with back rank. Yeah, yeah, I think king f1 is a very, uh, a very natural decision here. Um, so how... Uh, do you play with black? I, I'm not even sure. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I actually think white is better here. It feels it feels strange, but I, I don't see immediate equality for black. Like no, I mean, in Blitz, uh, white would definitely be uh, for choice. Yeah, because you cannot play anywhere with this rook to create, I don't know, threats of rook a1 check, because rook d7, like rook a5, rook d7, you lose a piece on the spot. Uh, immediate king e4, white can just win the f7 pawn. Maybe this is a draw. I mean, maybe you should actually play like this. But to just give up the pawn on f7 with checks in a position where you currently... And king of one has been played by Fabiano, by the way. So we are yeah. correct in guessing this move. But honestly, if you allow g2, g4, I would, get, I would start getting slightly worried with black. Because this knight e1, rook c4 threat is quite significant. So, With um, g4, right? Yeah, like maybe h5 right now, just to stop g4. h5 is anyway nice, because in end games you anyway play h5 and have this f7, mm -hmm. g6, h5. But I, I mean, I can, I can ask this question again. Yeah. I can, I can continue asking this question, and uh, I honestly, so far I, I failed to find anything better than, than just returning this pawn and going like... Actually, if you want to make a draw, with the inclusion uh, of h5, h3, you can do this. And this is just an immediate draw, of course. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. yeah, now that rook takes h7 is not a move. You, yeah. I think you just run. I think you just take this draw. Because, like, if you if you make one more waiting move, I don't know, something like bishop f6, you could objectively be in some trouble here. It's not impossible. Yeah, knight has to be on d8 to protect f7 pawn. And... White's pieces are very active. Yeah, like, I mean, once again... Uh, Unusual the, endgame. Yeah, the only move I could find, actually, even to, to avoid losing immediate material is maybe rook d6, so that in this position, sorry, uh, rook c4 check, we at least have the d5 square. But okay, rook d6, the white plays a move. Maybe, mm. maybe there isn't, I mean, even let's say g5, bishop g7, and we continue shuffling. Black is not really making that much progress. Although we are not, we, we're threatening to run, yeah? Maybe yeah. it's not so stupid. Something like bishop f6, rook d6. 
But obviously, yeah, but I have bishop c5 here. Yeah, yeah if you want to make a draw, you, you can play something. Oh, so there is rook c6. And yeah, now that the knight is knight, knight is knight not is hanging not on d8. Yeah, yeah, but maybe even then, okay. So bishop c5 with rook c6, just check and see what happens. King goes to the c file because king here actually gets mated again, which is quite beautiful. So king goes to let's say c4. And maybe just even back, and then I want knight d2, knight mm -hmm. d4. No, but white is just not worse. And g5 is a huge threat. Yeah, yeah. White is just not worse because of just how 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 coordinated his pieces are compared to to black. So people are screaming for Magnus to play e4. <laughs> yeah, e4 e4 is not going to be is not going to be played. But we appreciate the suggestion, and this is maybe a good time to say that. We really are uh, extremely happy to have uh, uh, the support of the people uh, watching this, both on Chess24 and on YouTube. You. Yeah, and uh, uh, a, li a little bit of plugging of the show. Consider going premium if you're watching this on Chess24. There's plenty of value on Chess24, I feel, for for what uh, uh, I mean. What you get for uh, for subbing, I think, is is a very good deal. And also, just clicking a like or subscribing to the channel on YouTube is something that doesn't cost you any money and uh, will will be a small sign of appreciation so <laughs> we'll we'll definitely be very grateful for that as well right so make sure you do okay yeah <laughs> why not e4 <laughs> why, why not e4 kappa and h5 played I, I have a feeling that magnus kind of realized what's going on here and if fabi plays h3 here King e4 will be more or less blitzed out because I, I don't think Magnus has any illusions about still being better in this position. So he would not go for this bishop f6, rook d6, and king run. He I has nothing so. to try. No, I, 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 it just doesn't look like black is better with this knight on g8 and the bishop on g7. Like, if you look at it with like purely human eyes without counting the pawns, just I mean, white is just too active for you to have any hopes of of winning. Yeah, and just as I said, we we welcome all of you kind people in the chat. There are now people in chat saying these draws are prearranged. Uh, yeah, it's one way. You take you, I mean, you take the good with the bad. You you I mean you can't you can't have everything. So you you, you obviously uh, have to accept this will be part of it. Prearranged. Yeah, <laughs> extremely, extremely obviously prearranged draws all of these. In particular, game one, of course. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is how you this is how you prearrange draws. Play for seven hours, ten minutes, including fifty minutes in a <laughs> in a three against two on one side. We should give Oscars for that. For yeah, yeah. That acting. that was that was that, that was a very good performance. Uh, but I mean, I, I guess everybody understands this is a this is a joke. Apart from maybe the person making that comment, but who knows? Uh, <clears throat> H3 hasn't been played yet, but also without the pawn on G4, it's much harder for White to create threats. So, no, I mean the pawn just begs to to be on G4. Yeah, very much so, very much so. And King D4, King E2 is not something Black wants to allow, right? Well, if you can run to f5, yes. If you if you cannot run to f5, you will be you will be I mean worried. I mean, h3, king e4. I thought king e2. But I can continue running, right? But then I cannot play g4, right? I mean, if I no, even like even this position might be okay for white. But black is getting close to where he might start thinking that mm. you know he actually has an extra pawn. Yeah. <laughs> then how to react against king e4? Ah, knight oh, g5, no, right? we can, yeah, we, just that's, knight g5. that's the line we were showing. Knight g5, yeah, king yeah, f5, sure. knight f7, black takes and goes rook f6. I mean, yeah. bishop f6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they agree a draw and everybody goes home. <laughs> uh, so, another Looking. very nice game. I mean, just, <laughs> I start to enjoy this much more and more. <laughs> and today, my question of the day is going to be quite a serious one. Okay. Uh, so I hope Sopiko knows both of them, but 
this is not 100% and Peter definitely does know both of them. So I apologize to Pico if you don't know <laughs> any of them. Uh, so Pelevin or Prilepin? I uh, am out. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, for me, it's not really a choice because uh, uh, I read, uh, I think, like the entire Pelevin catalog and uh, um, I know uh, sort of enough about Prelepin not to read any of his stuff and uh, <laughs> I mean this is a bit of a political statement because uh, I understand he is an important Russian writer but he is also these days a political figure uh, and uh, uh, not one of my favorite political figures let's put it like this so uh, I have such a backlog of things I can read that I can choose not to read people I don't particularly like. Uh, so for me, it's a very easy choice. Okay, so for me, it's hard to say because as a person, definitely Prilepin. Yeah, I, I mean, I really <coughs> respect him. Um, uh, but as a purely as a writer, uh, uh, definitely Pelevin now because uh, yeah I, i'm still buying every uh, his every book uh, it's, it's quite easy since he's publishing exactly one book uh, per year and uh, every year it comes out in september so it's quite easy uh, yeah and prelepins i liked uh, his like sort of short uh, essays uh, stories but uh, his long books I sort of, you know, tried to like, but I always found them a little bit boring, yeah. Yeah, but once again, I, I, I'm I, aware that I'm probably missing out on, on, on something important in the modern Russian literature, but I'm kind of okay with this decision. <laughs> don't don't really feel like it's, it's an important, uh, you know, it's an important uh, thing I need to correct. H5, H3, and yeah, Magnus played King, King E4. four. Okay, yeah. so well done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, GG's. G -G -W -P. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Knight G5. Oh, yeah, this is what something... F FTW. Yeah. FTD, FTD, for what? the draw. <laughs> <laughs> is F3 a move? I was trying to calculate F3 here. Is F3 a move? I guess H4, yeah? <laughs> if you if, if you if you don't F6 want to G four right? Yeah, F six G four would be another That's... one of those very be <laughs> very beautiful constructions with the mate in the center of the yeah. board. But and Fabi hasn't taken on F seven yet. I think he's checking if maybe he's better after F three because, <laughs> I mean, it's rather obvious he's not worse after Knight takes F seven. But uh, yeah, I don't think. I mean, the the easiest is just to play H four, of course, stopping all these ideas on the spot and if you take it's the same exactly. yeah it's the same completely drawn setup black is never in any trouble here yeah it's not one of those positions where you have bad bishop uh, with you know pawns blocked on uh, the same square uh, color of squares yeah no on, it doesn't matter. on one side it, it generally doesn't matter at all with rooks yeah, with, <laughs> yeah and, and with the rooks and with the rooks on yeah Okay, so we will see handshake soon. Yeah, we assume uh, we assume knight takes f7, and and uh, yeah, and this already has happened. And Fabi will not pretend he is slightly better here. I'm pretty sure the game is about to finish. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I Rook mean, f7, bishop f6, and yeah. And this is why it was important to include h5 and h3 once again, banging on the same theme. But to, in this position, you would actually have to think a little bit with black because it's it's reasonably. I mean, you, you will not like this endgame very much. It might be holdable, but you you will not like holding it. But with the uh, h5, h3 included, this is the position now, and yeah, we expect uh, we expect a handshake any moment. What a game! Full of yeah, ups and, and downs. To, yeah, I have to say that um, although it's the third game in a row in which Fabiano was worse uh, with white. <laughs> Uh, it's the first one of those three where he wasn't uh, outplayed. He was just out prepared today, or maybe uh, even out tricked with this uh, taking yeah. 20 minutes as opening by Magnus. Yeah. 
But then he was not outplayed uh, at all. Though he could get a pretty pleasant position in game three after rook a5, right? Fabiano. Yeah. No, but then he was slightly Yeah, worse. then he was worse. Yeah, and then, I mean, you, you could make an argument that his position sort of constantly was worsening uh, in that game, and he was he was getting at least slightly outplayed. Yeah, g4 check played, and uh, yeah, I mean, you probably take to not think about anything. It takes, takes, king e6, rook is yeah, it, it It's not really a very exciting position to discuss. <laughs> Even if white gets the absolute maximum, like if you teleport the king to e4 here, it's still a very straightforward draw for black. Even if you take the e5 pawn off the board, it's a very straightforward draw for black objectively, so... No, but then okay, it's like hundred more moves to play. Of course, yeah, but you, you <laughs> yeah. still you still hold it in in most cases. No, but there is a, a dangerous plan that you can finally somehow bring your bishop to e5, pawn to f4, then like can start suffering. I mean, in yeah. a real way. For sure, yeah. But here, okay. No, the suspicion but, is the game. The game may already have been drawn because. Uh, I yeah. don't. I don't. I don't think Magnus necessarily takes this long to take on g4 yeah. in this position. And yeah, and the game show. and the game has been drawn. We we now have the result in the viewer. So uh, I think we managed to get many things many things right today, which is very pleasing. Yeah, and, and uh, exciting tactics and fire on board. And also something I wasn't checking very carefully: how much rating does Magnus lose by? with every draw I just said 0, 0. Nothing, yeah. I was surprised myself I think it, if it was like one more one point more difference between them then he will start losing uh, 0. 0.1 yeah <laughs> but now he just doesn't lose at all ah, okay yeah. so I was I was wondering if maybe this this whole uh, subplot is about about to become interesting but yeah probably probably not no he doesn't risk in that sense and uh, after one d4 and one c4, what do you think the, the double header with white will bring from, from Team Magnus? What? Well, he played one d4 in game two and one c4 in game four. And now he has two white games in a row. So He should listen to Sasha. Finally play e4. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. I mean, especially now, uh, thanks to this uh, stupid video, uh, it was revealed that Petrov yeah was prepared huge for the surprise match. yeah i mean i still feel petrov offers white slightly more options than berlin and i don't know i think petrov i just should su suit uh, magnus style i mean it just i mean there are lots of lines with with the hope to get a slight advantage i mean maybe it's not his style any any longer but that's okay. That's another point. Yeah, but we'll we'll see. There's a there's a white game tomorrow. Then there's a rest day, and then there's a white game again. on again on Sunday, right? Yeah. If I'm not mixing up my days of the week, so we have uh, all that to look forward to. But yeah, today today was an interesting game, and there's there's some definitely some talking points, uh, but. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like Magnus actually knew uh, either more about this line or exactly... Do you, do you think Fabi goes for this if he knows after Queen C4 he is risking not to equalize? I don't know. I mean, maybe it's still zeros and... Uh, maybe, okay, maybe he just didn't like this position but uh, never analyzed it and just knew the computer's evaluation and... And okay, and he didn't want to start thinking before playing this queen e2, queen c4, because then it kind of loses uh, quite a lot of uh, sense, yeah, to, to go for it if you start thinking before playing. Yeah, it. that's true. And uh, yeah, so he had no time. He had just to make a rush decision, and he went with it, and it proved to be. There is a risky decision, but you know it all. All's good. What ends good, yeah. Yeah. Whatever they say. Yeah, that is true. So, 
I mean, this is, I think, the first white game he can be quite happy with. I mean, uh, I mean, not really happy, but compared to previous games, it went much better for him. He was just out prepared. I mean, it's, it's just different when you are out prepared or out played. I think it leaves a different feeling after. Yeah, I think that's true. And uh, today, yeah, when when they actually start, both of them started playing. He played arguably better, I think, because Magnus. It feels like Magnus should have had some chances after d3, and uh, in the end, didn't come even close to to winning this game. Yeah, b5 maybe was the. Yeah, once again, we'll we'll we, now the guesswork is over, and we can yeah. actually analyze this and come to some conclusions. But it felt like b5 was a very very serious alternative there, and. And bishop f8? After next king b6, yeah. yeah. Yeah, bishop f8 next move, but uh, yeah. But there. here we might be blundering. So. Yeah, we, we might be blundering in a big way after bishop f8 for sure, yeah. But we'll we'll obviously now check and see uh, and see what's what. Wait for Peter's recap. Yeah, yeah I don't need to check there is Peter's recap. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So I'll I'll get to I'll get to the recap momentarily and once again thanks uh, thanks for watching everybody it's a pleasure for us to to talk about this and uh, it's it's better when there is immediate response so thanks uh, thanks for being in us in chat and uh, and on YouTube and everywhere and we will be back live tomorrow. T live tomorrow same time 4 p.m. Central European thank you very much so, yeah see you tomorrow thank you and see you tomorrow bye bye.